Well, Smite fans, it is that time again. SPL about to kick off. My name is John Finch. I'll be happy to take you through all these matches today. But don't worry, we won't be going alone. I've got Anatoly Alexeyanak here with me as well to break down some of these big sets coming up. We actually do have some pretty important ones here. This first one, rival against Trifecta. Uh, opposite tale between these two in the standings. One thriving, already qualifying to MSI. Another one with no hopes and aspirations to get there, but every set still matters to get in to the second phase for Worlds. That's right. You take your entire record with you into the second phase. So you have to make sure that not just in terms of getting a W here, as it is probably favoring rival getting it, but yep. even improving your differential and taking all of that which into the second phase. Because, I mean, totally, I mean, I don't see any reason to bury the lead here. Trifecta does have a very different look now, right? No longer wow. with Lasber there in the middle lane. It is now Moswell they've picked up of Splice World Championship fame, who's now going to be captaining the red, white, and blue here for Trifecta. Let's take a look, though, at the standings here first. Again, we want to show all of these teams where they're at right now. That's exactly the point that you're making. Trifecta really having some struggles, unlike Team Rival, who are up near the top. So far, Dignitas, Rival, Pittsburgh Knights, and E United qualifying towards MSI. The last two remaining spots still up in the air. Space Station and SK Gaming can still make it. Splice still having four more sets to play. is probably very likely to make it, depending on the results this week against LG and Trifecta. Yeah, this will be a big telling week for Splice if this team has managed to meld together with their new roster as well. And if they can beat those teams, they're projected to beat. But again, those are stories for another time. The one that we're focusing on here right now is this set between Rival and Trifecta. And to sort of get back to your original point that these matches all matter, I mean, Trifecta now with Moswell, I feel like have improved a good bit already with someone who's used to being in the mid lane there. Trying to grab some wins here can help them going forward. It feels better when you have a natural mid laner in their natural position, right? Sure. Lasbro was not a natural mid player. He was a more of a jungler, which is good in terms of knowing what a jungler wants to do. So him pairing up with Weaken, they could pick up on those tendencies, go hand in hand from the jungle fights, but it just wasn't enough. Sometimes I saw Lazarus positioning, it was a little questionable. He thought he was still a jungler occasionally. Yeah, and the only problem, though, with the fact that their roster is finally maybe having five people on their right roles is that they're trying to make that roster work up against Team Rival, where only one team so far in the entire phase has found success trying yep. to beat this rival team. It's just not going to be particularly easy and that's because this roster stacked with talent from top to bottom the only question mark that existed there for a couple of weeks was panda cat and he removed that question mark made an exclamation point right away he loves his high bursty mid mages he loves the hobwa he'll play the zeus from time to time he'll even build and rush the rod of tahuti going sometimes for the off builds on the poseidon in his last set going for bumba's mask but you know sometimes when you have this kind of a lead you can tend to experiment when you have a great supporting cast around Panicat. And I think that's what has allowed him to thrive so much in this mid lane role is the fact that Twig and Final K have been such a huge you know, sort of lifting, carrying factor for him. Now, I think that Panacat's got to the point where he's obviously making tremendous individual plays on his own, too, but it's much easier to sort of get into the groove when those guys are are greasing the wheels for you, so to speak, and, and making life a lot easier. I love that play, actually, from Panacat, kind of showing off with the juke moves and then throwing the taunt. When you're feeling it, you're just feeling it, and this dive play coming through, surviving the gank from Samper Soccer, Panacat on the Poseidon. It felt very comfortable, and even, you know, playing the Hunters could be in his arsenal. That's right. Panacat can certainly still play Hunters in the mid lane quite well, and that's become one of those strategies that is still very, very popular right now. But but to talk about what it is that Panacat does so well for this team, it's that he's so versatile in what he plays, right? He can play the Hobwaz like we saw the Poseidons. He can play big bursty mages. He can play immobile mages even when they're in danger sometimes and position very safely. He can also play the more team fighty stuff that they need for him. It's that sort of willingness to play whatever it is that rival needs that works for this team and has made them so strong. Finch. Panacat is so versatile, he actually reached out to Twitter before this set to figure <laughs> out from the fans what he should play because that's how versatile he is. He doesn't even know what he wants to play in this set. That's right. I think I saw one of the suggestions was play one of the new gods, so very unlikely we'll see him playing Horus or set no, in the middle not. lane, but hey man, I mean, it might, right now my dude is willing to play just about anything, so maybe they're not entirely off the table, though I imagine at this point he probably won't want those two picks, but I mean Panacat's not getting this done alone, right? Fine OK has had a breakout oh, yeah. season for someone who's already you know established anyway, 
game, but he's really kind of transcended his gameplay, I feel like, this season. Absolutely bananas. That quadra kill with the Achilles in the earlier portion of the phase one, playing the Sarket solo, the Hell solo. Yeah. The You would talk about versatility from the mid roll. If anything, there's more coming from that in the solo lane. Yeah, it's, it's this team's identity, man. Everyone across the board is willing to play just about anything. It's really what's made them so tough to stop for everyone else and hard to figure out. But we can at least figure out what's going on in Fine OK's head right now, though, because I understand that he is standing by here with us right now for the interview. What up, folks? Tom Battinger here next to Fine OK, the star player for Team Rival. Coming into this one trifecta, you know they've made some changes. That mid lane is now world champion Moswall. How does that affect your approach? Um, I mean, it definitely is uh, an upgrade for them. So um, we were going to take them serious before, and we're definitely going to be still taking them serious with Moswall. Um, it's not really going to change much, though. I think we're still going to get the 3 0. So. Is it more of a so? Is it more of just a difference of play style? Do you think they've become a better team, or is it just a different team now? Um, I think it's a little bit different of a play style. I think uh, Laspra he didn't really ever get comfortable in the mid lane um, coming from the jungle, so he didn't really have that deep of a god pool, and he often played gods that kind of played themselves, like Nuwa and stuff. Um, and I think Moswell is a little bit more experienced, so he can play some of the gods that have uh, that require some more team comps and uh, more uh, coordination. So. Makes sense. You guys, Team Rival, I know you guys do your homework. You wouldn't be this accomplished without it. So obviously you prepared for Trifecta. That said, they threw a last bit of curveball. How does that change things? Is, is it sort of like all your homework and studying is gone, or does it still make a difference here? I think it just depends on like where you're focusing on the map. I mean, I don't think we're really going to focus in the mid lane because we have Panic Cat in mid, so there's not really much to work with there. So, um, so I think we'll just focus on my side of the map, and we'll certainly get the 3-0. Awesome. Well, that's fine. Okay. Back to you guys at the desk. Certainly great to get to hear thoughts from Fine OK. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, I mean, we just spend all that time talking about how great Panda Cat is, and then he sure. undercuts us by saying there's no nothing of value for them in the middle lane. So Fine OK, obviously having a little bit of fun there. But like you heard Tom kind of mentioning there, maybe a little bit of the playbook does get changed up when all of a sudden you've got Mazwa to worry about. I think so. I, I remember seeing a lot of Alpwash bans, not only against Mazwa in Season 5, but at the beginning sure. of Season 6, that kind of fell off, where teams were still experimenting with what works in the meta. But Mazwa taking some time off, after he left Splice, we could see Alpwash today. We could see Alpwash. He was still playing a lot of Jean Kui and Nuwa when he left. He only had, what, two sets, I think, before he left. But he was basically playing those two gods for the majority of it. Some Merlin, if that slipped through. So there's definitely still a lot of stuff in his god pool. Sort of like what they're saying outside of what you might have expected from someone like Lazbra, who could at times be a bit limited. But, I mean, this trifecta roster has some problems elsewhere, too. I do think Moswall is a big one to focus on. But, I mean, I'm worried for Ducky. My man's been getting beat in a lot of his matches anyway, and now he's going up against the red-hot hand of Fine OK, and things get rough. Yeah, it's not really fair to Ducky, because he's consistently playing against King Arthurs. In <laughs> they do let him through a lot. In matchups, where, yeah, even though he does get Kamasas to deal with that, it's still not a very easy matchup. It's a mechanical demanding matchup in the yeah. solo lane, but with Moswell joining Trifecta, it's going to be dependent onto him and what he can bring to pair up with Weaken. Yeah, can he work with Weaken better? I mean, it, does he maybe make some early rotations over there to the solo lane? There's definitely Definitely some options for Moswell to try and have a bit more of an impact. And I think there's a good chance that we'll see Jean Kui make a make an appearance with him here in at least one of these games. It's such a comfort pick for Moswell. It lets him play so differently, gives them some extra slightly, you know, sort of tanky bruisery presence and covers so much area. Moswell really does like these AoE types of gods and fights. Any god that can survive or peel for themselves is yeah. where you want to go, especially knowing how aggressive Rival is going to be. Captain Twig playing Erlang Shen from from time to time, sure. loves to gank the mid lane, so I'm expecting Moswell to either play the Jean Kui, the Alpwash, the Zeus's to peel for themselves, or maybe the Nuwa just to buy some time. Yeah, and we've talked about how well he plays with, with Weaken, maybe even some impact he'll have with Ducky, but the supports are there a lot of the times too. He's got to make sure that his synergy with Ionic is really high as well. And at the very least, we can figure out where Ionic is at with his headspace right now. It's Ionic standing by for the interview. What up, folks? Tom Badger here next to uh, Ionic here, support player for Trifecta. Obviously, we're going to jump right into it. New mid laner, tell me everything that's going on with Moswell. Uh, well, we're really excited. He's the champ. I mean, he brings a lot to the team. Like, he's got that championship experience, and when you have the ring, like, you're hungry for another one. So, we're ready to go. Gotta love it. You guys uh, struggling to find some wins, going up against Team Rival. What's the thought process there? Well, it's probably just going to be like support difference. Like I'm much better than Mike, so you'll see that throughout the game. 
Sounds good, man. Uh, what are your feelings overall about the the whole series? Uh, well, you'll probably just see me like out playing Mike throughout the series. So. I meant the one that uh, with with Kawhi. Oh, okay. Well, Raptors are gonna close it out tonight. Yeah. No KD. No problem. Sounds good. We got the important information. That's Ionic, support player for Trifecta. Back to you on the desk. Wow, man. Uh, what a big advantage that that trifecta, I imagine, we've been up all night figuring out, which mm -hmm. is that Ionic is much better than Polar Bear Mike. And because of that, they'll be able to make a ton of, I imagine, plays throughout this set that will help them out. And you can't forget about the Toronto set as well. You know, oh, without sure. their star player, like, how are they ever expected to win? But yeah, you never that, know. That might be distracting Ionic a little bit, worried about the Raptors. I imagine he has a bet going on with Aggro that could potentially <laughs> hurt him there, too. So he's got a lot to think about in this set, does Ionic, to, to try and make sure they can, they can get some early value. And it is tough playing at someone like Polar Bear Mike, because he'll play a lot. Of different stuff too mm -hmm. and it can be tough sometimes if you're that support especially early on trying to figure out where you should be and how you should play it Yannick and PBM are such good friends and you know what they say you got to keep your friends close and your enemies closer and that's exactly what they did in this yep. set where they're just <laughs> I'm sorry I can't, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face <laughs> you did, that was good you almost got through <laughs> I almost got the inside <laughs> joke between me and Finch exactly god I hate that expression Trifecta and Rival though they're going to be the ones in this match Trifecta will be in that first pick spot Rival going to be responding with the last pick then and they'll get to hold on to that one and try and be reactive. Maybe they'll give it over to Final K. But right out the bat, I was wow. going to ask you what you thought was going to be prioritized. The new gods, Horace and Sed, healers, but we already have our answer, Afro Band Out. So it's funny because I thought Moswell would be the one bringing out the Aphrodite, not right. necessarily rival, but who knows what Final K has in his arsenal, knowing that the healers got buffed between Hell, Changa, and Aphrodite. He can bring out any one of those three gods. It's not really a Panic Ad god to be played in the mid lane. I don't expect that to be the case but Final K has been very flexible. He has indeed been. I mean, it's been the team identity. Twig as well will play just about whatever you need. The Unbot, I wonder if that needs to be something that you consider in these bands. It has been a huge different maker in a lot of these sets that fear no evil. It's just so difficult to, to respond to. There's so many other sources of control in the game that even Magi's cloaks often don't help. Is that something that needs to be prioritized, do you think? It's possible, but I know that Erlong Shen is a favored god mm -hmm. coming out of Captain Twig. Weakened loves his aggressive gods. He could go for that. He can go for the Sir Ked. Sure. It's another option. He's brought out the Nemesis from time to time. So this could be a similar god pull between these two junglers. Habla being banned out as well. That means, okay, at least the Yeoman Gunner gets taken away, but Horus, Set, King Arthur, all still available here at this point. Freya has made it through as well. She's one that's been valued. Osiris still not have been taken away at this point. With these bands that are through, Merlin and Norman Gunner makes sense, but the sort of Aphrodite Hobwa bands a little bit lower down on that on that tier list. Still strong, obviously, but not quite as much as some of the other high ones. That leaves a lot of stuff that's still out there on the table totally. Yeah, I'm expecting Rival to go for an aggressive soul laner against Ducky and try to lean on that matchup. Try to really exploit it, get the blue buffs, because that transitions whenever you have like a soul laner that gets ahead, they can transition to back camp invades, harassing the jungle sure. for the speed buff and it just bleeds into the rest of the map. I don't think that Moss will, will have a good time in the mid game if Final K gets ahead early. And remember, it's the 2v2 over there in the solo lane a lot nowadays with the supports even. So if your solo can kind of win that matchup in the 2v2, you're even helping your support, putting their support behind a little bit. It can have that sort of bleed over effect exactly like you're saying, and it makes it so much easier for your hunter to stay relaxed in the duo lane because they are in the long lane now. They know they don't have to worry about ganks as much. I mean, look at Slaney's face and PBM's face. They're definitely feeling it already in this Pump. set. They're <laughs> wanting to Freya go Osiris. for some funny picks, but Freya's not one of those unorthodox picks oh that God, we've seen no yet. Demon Freya Robin, me. this gives him a ton of dive potential, and I kind of like this totally, into a lot of stuff that particularly Moswell likes to play. Robin can often be pretty good. He doesn't play a lot of gods with dashes and leaps and that sort of thing, so Robin can kind of dive back there and sit on top of you. They're kind of already preemptively assuming what god Moswell is going to pick like as a result, so I would love to see maybe potentially a new awe, something that's going to be able to at least survive the Jean Cui. Even though, yeah, Robin can dive him, the protections go. is going to go a long way. Kronos mid wouldn't be a bad idea for Moswell with the rewind, but it could also be a wowie god. You just never know. You don't know, but Kronos can sometimes struggle a little bit, I feel like, into the Robin matchup. Overhead kick, especially with that sort of delayed time yes. stop, can be really easy for him. So without rewind, Kronos has really limited options if Robin is ganking him. That's if Robin is for Captain Twig. I think there is some chance it could still be for Fine OK and be a bit of a flex pick. It just depends on once they see the entire roster of Trifecta right. before they want to last pick, whether it's a soul laner or a jungler. That's the benefits of being second pick. Yeah, you give up maybe one potential first gun. 
godlike pick, but at the end of the day, getting a counter matchup for final K, I think I'll take that trade, especially when Trifecta are the ones that locked in a Terra, not necessarily known for bringing too much imbalances in team comps. Yeah, we're seeing Panda Cat on the Giannis. He's made some big plays on this one before, even gotten some nice snipes to his name this year as well. So Panda Cat can, is certainly comfortable in this type of playmaking god. That means very likely then we'll be seeing Freya go to Arkle. A bit magical heavy from their carries, but certainly still strong. I mean, they've got the Robin already and can even flex still into an Osiris, Achilles, something like that for Final K and Solo. Definitely could see a lot of physical frontliners as well from PBM. They sure, need it between Ama the Giannis and the Freya. Ama is an option. Achilles support could be one way yeah. to look at it. I think that the Giannis is a great look for Rival in terms of allowing Captain Twig on the Robin to just dive the back line get out, or maybe even just to continue chasing. This could even be like an all-in composition from Rival, depending sure. on their next two picks. That's a ton of dive potential between the Rana, or the Robin and the Giannis. I mean, if, even if Kronos gets off rewind and he's able to reposition, if, if it's forced without through space of time, that could even be used to sort of catch him back out on the back end. They've got a lot of tools, but it looks like Rival not buying that this Kronos is going to be going into the middle lane. They're banning away the Zeus, even in a world where they've picked Robin. Yeah, that's a little surprising because I want to play against the Zeus right. if I'm Robin. I, I can so easily too. dive, force out Aegis's, still overhead kick the detonate uh, once I read that. But they're still a little bit worried thinking that it's just too much AoE damage outside of the Robin. Like, even the Robin right. can deal with it, Freya can't, right? So if Good Freya point, yeah. gets isolated or gets a little bit too frisky, she's going to get punished. Well, I am a bit curious about where Trifecta are going with these picks. We've seen so much of Najah support lately, but with the Terra already picked up, I have to think then that they've got their pick for Weaken in this Najah already for this one, which means that they're probably still waiting on what they want to do for Moswall and then what they want to do for Ducky with those last two picks for Trifecta. And Rival, I think, have recognized that. They're banning out the Osiris. I'm a little surprised they didn't want that one for Final K. Especially with them being the next pick, but it just leads me to believe that they want to save Final K's pick for the very last one. Wanted sure. to see the counter matchup and off the nausea that you mentioned whether it's going to be for weaken or otherwise you want to pair this up with a high bursty mid mage yes right like a raw like a cuckoo clan just to be able to get that burst available poseidon couldn't even be a bad idea this Baron Somdi ban, I imagine that is a support ban. You're worried oh, yeah. about that being played by Polar Bear Mike in particular, so they take that away. And so then Polar Bear Mike goes, man, I can't play Baron. Guess I'll just play Fafnir, who's a really, really, really good support. Guess I'll just do that. Yeah, and even though Bummer. there's only one, like, Hunter in terms of Freya, sure. coerce on a Freya late game, yeah, I'll take that. I don't need a physical Hunter to pair up with that. You're exactly right. Coerce will certainly still be strong, even with this composition. And even if you don't have a great Coerce targets, I mean, Draconic Corruption Fafnir is one of the best supports in the game when he's in that form. He has the initial leap of, as the Dwarf, and then the stun. He has the a second stun. The, the AoE Coerce, obviously very strong. Those those tick damage from his autos can add up during a fight too. So even without that direct synergy, it's still really good. And knowing PBM style and also Rival's identity, whether it's season six or even earlier, it's objective control. Yep. Outside of the coerce, PBM is gonna be picking up the frenzy. Expect to see an early 10 minute goal fear. You could even be earlier than that. Now, the way that Rival's comp has been drafted so far, I can kind of see the idea. Robin and Giannis give them a ton of dive potential. The Fafnir Freya have a bunch of synergy as well, and you can expect for this Freya to, to be able to get them some pressure early along with the Robin. But with Trifecta, I mean, they've got some good picks, but I don't know that I necessarily see a ton of synergy with what they've picked so far. I mean, can you tell from those where, where they're trying to go? It's a lot of CCs between the Terra and the Kronos, the sure. Root, the Stun, the Time Stop. I well, think there's more. that there could be a lot of dive potential onto Arkel if he's not prepared for it. There needs to be a lot of vision from Rival around that Gold Fury side to see where Weakness is coming from. Oh, this could potentially be scary. Sir Cat into Morgan, I would then imagine, for Moswall in the middle lane if they lock this one in, and they absolutely do. Now, this totally is spicy. They've got a lot of magical damage between those two carries, and now I'm wondering if they are planning on putting that Terra into the solo lane for Ducky with the Naja Sir Cat getting locked in with two more assassins. I mean, totally, what are you seeing here? I'm seeing a Giannis for Trifecta as well, actually. Being able to, cop to yeah. copy the Giannis <laughs> and being able to drop your own portals. And knowing how aggressive Weaken is, that could go a long way, especially on the circuit, a very high mobile goddess being able to follow up with burst damage from the Naja, the Circuit, the Morrigan. If anyone is isolated from Rival, it's going to be very easy to pick off, even against a tanky target like King Arthur with the last breath. 
Wow, Chuck coming in from fine. Okay, very interesting. These slows, though, could potentially be strong up against this composition, particularly someone like Morgan doesn't have a whole lot of tools to reposition anyway, unless she has to use Changeling, perhaps. But this is very interesting. I, I mean, I, I don't value Chuck particularly highly myself, sure. so I am a bit surprised Fine Okay's going for it. It makes sense against Morgan, because once she does go into the stealth, you're not missing the ultimate. Like, right. it's so <laughs> wide, and it's a three-second silence, sure. so Morgan can't follow up. She'll have to beads away from that. You force the beads there, and then Captain Twig gonna dive with the Robin. This is actually really scary, I think, for Moswell. And one thing Chuck does do pretty well is lane pressure, so if he is up against this Terra, oh. he should be in a ton, a, a great position to bully her out, yeah. which we did highlight early on as being really strong nowadays with the way the solo lane matchup is. Totally, really quick though, who are you leaning towards with these comps? Rival. Rival all, way, yeah. all day with the draft and just with that team. I'm with you as well, Tolly, on that one. Well, then let's go ahead and get into the match. Let's get it over to the casters. Thanks so much, French and Tolly. I was going to say Tolly and Tolly then, but that doesn't make any sense at all. Trifecta up against Rival, a new look trifecta with Moswell in the mid lane, and that means they're going to be picking up the Morrigan here. Is it going to be Terra Solo we're expecting here? I, I think that I would have to suspect this to be Terra Solo because trying to put Neja into the solo lane or even the Circuit, I, I don't really like the matchups possible for Trifecta here in solo, aside from the Terra into the Chak. I was just kind of thinking about Chak versus Terra in the solo lane. I think Chak definitely has pressure in the early game, right? Chak is Axes just, of death. I, I think that Chak is just a great tool to prevent, I, I think, a camping of the solo lane because there's just not much incentive to want to try and, and camp out a Chalk. He just has a lot of laning phase survivability to offer. Very true indeed. Ducky going to start right on the right hand side here. You saw Doug on the camera wick as per usual today. Shouts to him to catch in this. This is basically the wall off strategy here. And Ionic's there to try and help out or something? Ionic just Riding the long lane with, uh, or short lane with Ducky. Making I, I my think way just... down. Time. I just don't understand why Yannick was there. That's why I didn't get. Maybe he's teaching Ducky how to do it on the timing. Might have just been trying to assure that there wasn't an early proxy or something from proxy Mr. Kid. Proxy of the Phoenix. I, it's Taco. hard to assume, you're, but you're going you never deep, know. You're going deep into the explanations there of why that happened. But beginning of the game, it looks like Trifecta and Rival on this right-hand side with the supports in tow. We'll start off at their blue buffs. Where we in our kill left alone in the duo lane. Freya versus Kronos. Taco, who wins the matchup on paper? Uh, for the start, Just Freya. For the mid to late, that'll be Kronos. So early game is all Freya pressure, so expect to see Kronos push back under his tower most Probably of the time? Probably a little bit more pushback, but it really all depends because there are some circumstances where it, if Wowie's able to get some really solid time rifts off onto Arkill, can maybe poke him out enough that Arkill won't want to approach the lane to look for that in hand sustain off of the melees. Well, normally when we see a Morrigan, and we've actually got the Sir Ket here as well. Pretty good target to be able to switch into is that Sir Ket, both defensively and offensively. The true damage from the last breath, very, very useful in a team fight, but also the escapability of that Sir Ket can come in handy. Well, there's a lot of mobility and a lot of survivability for the Sir Ket, but I feel like Rival did a great job drafting in expectations, I, I think, of the circuit to be in the support role, or the Nija. Either way, there's just a lot of tools that Rival can use to really just stop a gank opportunity in its force. I, I mean, Panicat's got the three space and time. Captain Twig has Mystic Rush. It, it just doesn't really feel like there's going to be many opportunities for Ionic to try and pinpoint members of Rival. Well, with Lasbro being out of this team now on Trifecta and Moswell joining in, Trifecta, I'm guessing, have had a bit of time to warm up with Moswell to see what sort of compositions they put together. Because there's no way they're just going to come in on day one without much prep work and run a Morrigan mid. Well, this is a fairly recent swap change, though, for Trifecta. Mm. I I'm not certain that the team has really had all that much time to really practice with Moswell. So much as it is probably just Checking out with Moswell to see what he's comfortable on right now. And he started off with a Book of Tartarush here. Same can be said for Panda Cat on that Giannis too. See how this plays out. Giannis, definitely useful for getting around the map. We've seen him time and time before. Not the greatest overall in performances. Giannis, he kind of slipped from favor, but now and again he shows his face. I think Panda Cat just wanted the Giannis here for the mobility alone because through space and time is just such a great tool for creating distance from things like the Terra's Blessing or even Moswell on the Morgan for that Changeling Ultimate could be looking for double Sir Ket, Last Breaths, or double Windfire Wheels. 
Hammer out from Mike there, just trying to secure those camps and keep Ionic busy. Ionic could give him a kiss in response. Meanwhile, weakening the jungle on the Naja. A bit of a lead at the moment over Captain Twig in terms of farm, but that's kind of what you expect on a Naja with the ring toss and the extra mobility you get because of it. Something that I do like about Trifecta's composition, though, is the fact that Moswell has this Morgan to kind of make the decision between a last breath or a, a Naja change because. Well, I think it does add a little bit more pressure onto Wowie and Ducky here because one, Terra's blessings are, are going to be crucial for, I think, providing that last little boon of damage that Trifecta is probably going to be missing out on since Moswell seems to be investing more towards a double ultimate uh, style of play here. And as far as Wowie is concerned, he's going to be, I think, the primary follow up damage for Trifecta and a lot of their team fights surrounding this. Morgan transformation possibility. Nice little damage there onto Panda Cat, mainly through the Archer minions there used by Yannick with that kiss. The Chuck picking the solo lane, the attack. We've not really spoken about it too much just yet. I'm trying to work out one of the reasons for this. Now, obviously, attack speed slow with the rain is the, the latest thing that really allowed Chuck some sort of a buff, some sort of lease of life. Is the attack speed going to be useful here in this game? I think it's really just the knockup and really? the silence that follows it. it. It covers so much area, and when you look at Trifecta's composition, they're going to have to get pretty up close and personal if they want to try and deal some damage to Rival, which is why Rival has all of these tools at their disposal, I, I think, to just stop that in its tracks. It's such a heavy deterrence factor to want to all in with a Neja or Sirket when you have to worry about just getting briefly knocked up because of the interruption factor. In terms of gold right now, it's about an 800 gold lead already for Rival. And you can see there's just a little bit of a, a, a lead in terms of where they've been getting the farm early on. Mid lane, for example, Moswell only level four, now has his Book of Toth online. But Pandacat's got his two and 10 stacks and the level five. I think what I want to see here from Trifecta is as soon as Ionic hits level 5, that's got to be the, the go sign for Trifecta. But instead, it's going to be Rival putting Trifecta under pressure here on their blue buff. Yeah, Ducky getting aggressed on by Twig, but at the same time, the Sash onto fine. Okay, puts him under pressure. And he'll use the ultimate straight away after the fact, though. There's Ionic with his last breath. And Weekend's going to take one to the sky, but he's very low. A nice through space in time, though, is not going to be able to clip Weekend on the defensive. So T1 Tower going to prove to be a bailout for now for Trifecta. And I think that was Trifecta maybe lucking out a little bit. A nice ultimate there from Weekend to really stop the fight in its tracks. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at a relic situation to see if anyone really used more than the other. But it's just mainly the supports that ended up using anything in that engagement at all. Obviously, three ults for three ults as well. So all square for now. The blue buff was defended too, so it was just a nice little bit of a skirmish. Rival do still have a war though on Trifecta's blue buff, probably planning on revisiting that. I don't feel as though Fine OK necessarily got off the ultimate that he wanted in that choke point position. Um, probably wanted it a little bit further in, but Trifecta just had the appropriate response to defend their buffs. This is what Chuck can do in the laning phase, just keep the pressure going. And with Ducky, he can shoot his ultimate on the last little engagement. It takes a little bit longer for that terror ultimate to come up than Chuck's. So as you can see, Final Case already got his back up, and that's one of the reasons, you know, one of the extra things Chuck got was a little bit of love towards the ultimate cooldown. Uh, this is also part of the problem for Trifecta, because with Ionic, Weekend, and Ducky's ultimates all on cooldown, they lose a lot of their early aggressiveness. So while I understand that it's important to try and defend Ducky's blue buff, you have to also kind of make sure that it's worth what you're giving up. And I think losing the possibility of playing aggressive around that mid lane and trying to punish Panicat during arguably Giannis's best punishing period is, uh, it, it could come back to haunt them. Thinking about this composition that Rival have drafted too, pretty tricky for a gank to really come out from weak, and we can try to pressure any of these lanes. Chuck, CCM, you know, that lasts quite a long time. Giannis as well. And then this Frey on the left hand side. Oh, well, it goes both ways, because for Weekend, I think he definitely made the right decision, opting for the blink early on. Hasn't had a chance to really utilize it just yet, but I, I think that that's mostly going to be something that Weekend just has to try and find his moment now that he does have that wind fire wheels available yet again. Captain Twig even making sure to place the deep aggressive war because Rival, one more time, trying to invade this blue buff. Yeah, round two. Let's begin. Mike behind Ionic and Weekend, though, no and Ducky coming in too. Kiss comes in from Ionic and the last breath two onto Fine OK. But Fine OK drops the axe down and that's a ton of damage onto Ionic. That's forcing him out of the fight. Weekend, meanwhile, takes the target to the sky. Not the prime one they were after, but Ducky there with a the clap after the fact turns it around and gets the first kill on the board for 
Trifecta, but the sash after the fact, and Mike will take down Weak and Jungle for Jungle, but Trifecta do come out on top there, I'd say. That dot damage is a little bit too problematic here. Panigant, though, I, I think that that through space and time might have just been way too late. Probably should have launched that as soon as you knew their rival were getting ready to fight, just to try and possibly de-incentivize uh, Trifecta from looking to defend there. You can see the damage numbers there on your screen quite equal there. Experience game was in Rival's favor, to be fair, and that's because the blue buff went down and everybody else was still farming. But Ionic in for a gank onto Arkill. No call really made there, funny enough, from Rival to let him know that Ionic had used the ultimate, so he didn't have to use the beads. Great patience there from Wowie, waiting for after PBM's Hammerstone would come through to launch that time rip for the purple buff secure so so far so good for trifecta uh one for one trade out but surprisingly enough it's rival who are in the lead yeah and i think the one thing about that little gang that ionic now can maybe we can see some pressure from trifecta towards the duo lane knowing frey has got no beads at the moment but same can be said i guess for twig in the jungle and with chuck in this right hand side he's still equal level with ducky who got the first blood there that bonus goal will help him out to get his stone of binding online it's been a really quiet mid lane experience, though. If you compare it to maybe some of the more recent sets in, in the SPL, I, I think that Trifecta, or I, I shouldn't really say Trifecta, so much as I should rival have done, I, I think, a really solid job at just consistently pressuring Trifecta. And even after losing the first blood, I, I still think Fine OK is willing to try and continuously spam invades on this blue buff. I, Rival just understand they have the beefier comp for that mid game. Approach. I mean, funny enough, I think both Trifecta and Rival would like their mid laners to just be comfortable, especially with Pandacat still being a newer player to the mid lane overall. Sure, he's had a great season in mid, but he's still learning the lane, so to speak. And then Moswell joining this Trifecta team. But I think both teams are quite happy to let them just farm up and see what they can do in the later stages. You saw the through space and time fired off by Rival there. Just a little bit on the mark of Trifect on the front line, and that just allowed him to walk away in time. Oof. That hurts. Yeah, that is not looking like a fun laning phase experience for Ducky. Having to use that monolith just for some heals, even the dash away, losing a lot of his clear potential because of Final K's aggression. He's just trying to stay in range for experience, but now he's used every ability defensively. And Final K is forcing Ducky to base. Ducky has no TP here as well. And I think that's one of the things that Stone of Binding, it's great in terms of damage output and support, but it's not very good for defensive options against someone like Shaq as Moswell secures the kill with turning to Kronos there, I believe. Oh no, that was just no, Kronos. No, that okay. was that was just just the damage. Wow, he had the timer damage, and and Moswell was right there with him. Might have had that Morgan Mark going, just like Fuller oh, Mike in a spot of trouble here, and just blown up before he even has a chance to respond. And that is pretty impressive, considering Fafnir's ultimate takes him out of combat, but he was CC'd so long, not a chance to survive. So another kill for Trifecta. This is a new look Trifecta that seems to be finding some steam here against Rival. Seems to be a little bit more coordinated, at least in the side lanes, probably having some more trust going as well in that mid lane, since Mazel is a, a, a pretty experienced and veteran player. I mean, he just won a world championship, for crying out loud. That's true, he did, and now he's going to find himself in this Trifecta roster, struggling towards the bottom of the SPL. But if you're going to make a roster change, it's not the worst time in the world to do it now. Just before MSI, if you can't qualify for it, you can at least get prepared for the second phase of the SPL. And the more important one, which is the run for World Championships. Exactly. For a team like Trifecta, I mean, there's some possibilities to play mild spoiler to Rival. I mean, maybe hit the ego a little bit if they're able to bring Rival down in this uh, set or even a game or two. I think Rival aren't really expecting Trifecta to have much of a chance of taking the set off of them. Well, even though we've seen Trifecta get a couple more kills than Rival so far, it's still a lead for Rival in terms of gold, and that's pretty impactful considering the first blood also went to Trifecta too. Still, Rival just farming a little bit consistently throughout, and the experience is definitely going to where all the carries need to be as well. It is important to note, though, that a large portion of this lead is credited to Fine OK in that solo lane. He's doing exactly what this chalk was picked for, just playing the lane bully against Ducky, but I think Ducky is also doing exactly what needs to be done. Albeit, it's not a fun experience, I'm sure, but he's stalemated the lane for the most part. Probably going to end up losing his tower any any minute now, but I, I think that the importance of this Terra is to bring damage with her ultimate 
in the team fights, not to win out on this yeah. landing phase. Speaking of the team fights, we find OK when he makes these rotations to the fights, who should his priority focus be on in these engagements? Is it Kronos? He's just spamming. He's just whoever's he nearest? He's just spamming. If he can get the rewind out of Wowie, perfect. If not, it's still not too problematic. He's just really intended to be a meat shield. Am I going to get slashed by Weaken there. Ionic still following up because they did have a bit of pressure with Moswell in the mid lane for a moment or two. But Captain Twig just chilling on his left hand side on that Raven. They've got to be careful. No ward down from Trifecta there, so they weren't aware of it if they did get overly aggressive. Although, thinking a little bit more about it and, and fine, okay, he's taken a very aggressive approach as well with his itemization choices early on. The Warrior Tabai, Glass Shield, Blackthorns. This is a chalk that wants to fight or at least force the fights. I just think Blackthorn's so good for never running out of mana, guaranteed. 10% cooldown reduction most of the time and 300 health, which is really useful. Well, 20% CDR could go a long way for Final K as well, just for that attack speed slow on the rain. Uh, the fact that Trifecta could lose some possible DPS out of Wowie because of this chalk might give Captain Twig or even Arkill a, a little bit more time, I think, to try and collapse into Trifecta. Talk about collapsing. Rival have consistently tried to invade this blue buff and do so again. Ionic was there to try and cause some problems, but it's Mike a little bit too far forward for now. Damage has been done and the blue buff been taken. Actually, no, he wasn't taken. Duck has got a hold of it. Final K has to ult, and now he's in trouble. Last breath pushes him back in towards the danger zone. Final K by some time, and the turnaround could be really good. Moswell has to ult defensively to get away. And now with that, Rival can't, they've got no other damage to really follow up here. A trifecta are just scattering right now. T1 Tower and Sole most likely going to be toast. We can try to do what he can to defend here, but even if he looks to clear out the minion ways, I'm a little bit skeptical that PBM and Captain Twig are going to let this one go for free here, but instead, looks as though Captain Twig and Plumber Mike were a little bit more preoccupied with trying to get that final totem of Ku. They're looking for a bit of a pick on Weaken, but Weaken with the Blackthorn Hammer has got too much health, and Captain Twig, meanwhile, has none. Great ultimate out of Weaken, and a perfect follow-up from Ducky, but Panda Cat on the rotation. And Sable Vortex going to connect, but that's it. That's all Panda Cat really has for the damage. No through space in time, no threshold thing to use it to even get over there, and the portal had to be used defensively because it's a 2v1. You're not really trying to take that risk on the Giannis. For sure, and I also, I also think they keep looking at Naja like, hey, it's Naja, he's squishy, we can probably burst him down. But with the extra health from the Blackthorn Hammer, he's a lot tankier than people expect. I also think the Brawlers was a big part of the reason why Fine OK wasn't really able to sustain himself throughout that last fight. Yeah, Brawlers will come in handy now that Weaken's been back to base and just picked it up. We'll see what he can do with that with the anti-heal too, especially because it's going to be incidental extra, you know, extra reduction of health on Arkill, who's going to have some lifesteal, and Polar Bear Mike too. Not only that, rather than Final K, so there's, even though there's not an actual healer on this team, there is going to be incidental amounts of sustain that need to be taken care of. And it's interesting to see too that Trifecta are the main ones being concerned with this. Wow, are you going to force that Draconic transformation pretty early on from Polar Bear Mike, but Rival, it was all a distraction. <laughs> they were on the Gold Fury. Really good play from Mike, actually, I guess, in the end, just to be that far forward purposely. That zone work, and sometimes zone work isn't just standing there to say, hey, don't come this way. That's a that's a Mike classic, though, if you ask me, Hindu, and something that Trifecta should also have been a little bit more expectant of. I think they just took too long mm. trying to actually walk past Mike there before realizing, hey, they're actually on gold. And that's a 3k gold lead now for Rival. Pyromancer started by Trifecta. Stunt from Marswell onto Captain Twig. Captain Twig can't find the route after the facts, and the through space and time from Panda Cat. Didn't really connect with a single target. This Pyromancer is getting very low, but fine. Okay, with the attack speed slow will prevent them doing it for now. Pyro's reset as Mike gets a bit of damage for a moment or two. No ultimate available for him, remember. Ult situation for Trifecta here, Taco, is really good. Well, Wowie running a little bit low on that mana. Giannis is going to blink right in, though. Drop the last breath onto Captain Twig, but it's Panicat who's on the retreat now from Moswell, transformed right into that Robin. Weekend got him in his clutches into the sky, and Moswell right at the bottom to pick up the pieces. So Trifecta get a very good kill on this right-hand side, but the problem is, all the while, Arkel has now taken a tier one tower and begins work on a tier two. Even if Trifecta get the Pyro at this point, they lost quite a bit. They could lose more as Moswell gets picked in the jungle. Mike and 
Twig pick him apart before Trifecta can even turn around and help him. Ducky had to use the TP to prevent Arkill from taking down that T2 tower in the split push. And as soon as Arkill saw the teleport happening, he starts rotating in. Rival not even going to waste their time wow. with the Pyromancer. Yannick knows that they're on this fire giant, but it's a circuit against all of Rival. Not going to lie, it needs to do with the ultimate situation. If you think about it, Rival used all the ults, then Trifecta win a fight, but they use all their ults, and now Rival have their ults coming back up. In goes Yannick, looking for the steal on the fire giant, but he dies to Arkill. Kill. Polar Bear might take a ton of damage from the Fire Giant and Woey, but it's not enough to prevent the Fire Giant going to rival. Weakened Sashes in, looks for a Ring Toss, tries to get some follow-up damage on Arkill, but a good banish from him prevents that for now. Aegis from Arkill causes a problem, and the portal from Panda Cat allows him to escape. Everybody is just barely managing to scatter away here. Ducky just finished rotating in. You forget that he came in at full health because of how quickly Rival were able to shred him. Trifecta do look better, Taco. They look better in terms of the fights and the decision-making of those fights, but objective play is still causing them problems. That pull onto the Pyromancer felt like a bait to begin with from Trifecta, and while I understand they managed to accomplish their game plan, it's yeah. just such a steep investment that they have to do every single time they're looking for a pick, and that's where my initial concerns kind of came in for their composition. First, scaling this one out because I, I have seen some great plays. I think that Yannick has done a fantastic job, especially on the circuit with his patience of waiting to use the last breath until yeah, after the, the right ultimate, timing. Yeah. After uh, the CC's been down, he's made a good time to be able to push people back in. But you are right. I think Trifecta said all five members to Pyromancer really was a bait to try and force a fight, and we saw it coming. The problem was is that Rival kind of identified that too. Sure, they may have lost Panda Cat, but they also got a tier one on the left-hand side to at least make the difference even with losing the Pyro if they did. And, and for me, I, I think that that might just be Trifecta being a little bit too revealing in their intentions. You've got to try and hide things a little bit better. A little bit sneakier, yeah. Don't make the hand as obvious if you can help it. Left hand side then, I'll kill at level 20, a four level lead over Wowie. That is pretty He was just farming up T2 yeah. the entire time. A rival were so pre or trifecta, excuse me, were so preoccupied, they kind of forgot about this Freya in lurking. And now Freya's gonna become a bigger issue as time goes on. You said though late game Kronos will be better than Freya, but Freya's hit late game first is the problem. Typically, here. yeah, it's just when the Freya gets a four level advantage because she's been split pushing the entire time. Moswell, however, under well. heavy fire. Captain Twig gonna make sure to clean him right up with the Mystic Rush. Still looking to get away, however. Yannick's gonna catch him out with the last breath. And it seems as though the last breath tick downs are gonna be just enough to get the job done. We'll give it to Twig. I'll kill going through the jungle in an awkward spot. And he ain't gonna blink and look for the kiss, but get CC he changed straight away, and Ionic taken out. Weakened, meanwhile, though, did manage to get onto the back line and take down Arkill. Sash is onto Panda Cat 2, but he's evaporated by the armada of Rival as they now barrel down mid lane looking for a tier 2. And now Kronos, without rewind, he's got beads, though. Well, not any longer. He's still alive as Ducky is back to try and help out. A solid peel there from Ducky to help stop the dive. That was probably about to happen from Rival. Panda Cat, Ryan OK, and Polar and Mike instead going to turn their attention to this T2 tower in mid lane and just continue to expand upon their goalie. Might not have gotten everything that they were looking for, but even without wiping Trifecta, Team Rival are still actively getting something after every single fight. Didn't mention it just yet, but obviously Moswell in the mid lane did pick up the mask as well, which I do think his last two deaths was after he picked up this mask. And I don't think you've got to respect the amount of damage you're going to take by going for this option. It is fairly potent, though, on the Morrigan, especially when you factor in all of the movement speed, speed that Moswell is going to be able to utilize now, especially in that invis form. If Morrigan wasn't frustrating enough, uh, I think that that's more so something that Arkill and Pandacat have to be on the lookout for. But Mike has done a, a really good job, I think, at hovering his backline carries to ensure that if there's any damage coming out onto them, he's usually got a hammer to follow it up to prevent any other aggression from Trifecta. Funny enough, this Caliban phase, there was quite a bit of focus towards Mike with that Horus ban, first of all. Forget what the other ban was as well, but it was supportive in nature too. And they just allowed him to fall back to Fafnir, of all gods, who's started to see a bit more rise as time's gone on in terms of competitive play. Again. Fafnir could have also just been a, a really smart flex pick option here for Rival. Not necessarily they were going to throw it into Soul Lane or anything like that. It's just to have the possibility of, I think, stretching the implications of double hunters. 
Let's pick it back a little bit more. Ethereal staff into Pythag's piece in terms of build options here. Pythagoras' piece is something that's been debated, talked about a little bit on broadcasting, mainly from the European players to begin with in terms of pickups, and now seeing it on a supportive option. It's and pretty you... good on Fafnir, I guess, with how uh, Coerce works. And not only that, our kill Panicat. This is a lot of magical DPS that's going to be benefiting off of that Pythag's mm. piece. Ethereal staff, I, I, I think it still gets the job done for the most part. It gives Mike uh, some potency, I think, on Fafnir alone if he wants to aggress into Maul's Wall by himself. I mean, it says it steals things, so Mike just likes to steal. That's what he's telling me. He's a dirty thief. Panda Cat gets pushed almost into the wall, but the wall and the ult push back from last breath just weren't connecting correctly. Fine, okay, though, we'll drop the elbow. And well, we didn't even get a chance to get the ultimate off in time. He falls down, and it's a 4v5 with Ionic on the run and no ultimate. Ionic's probably not going to bother trying to look for a steal attempt onto that fire giant. No, instead, I'm going to take that opportunity to back, recognizing that the rest of the trifecta were down to leave him alone. Captain Twig loses his blink, but in exchange, all of Rival gets a fire giant. Weekend and Moswell knew the objective was being taken, but neither of them really in a position to try and challenge that back. Went for kills instead. Was that the right call to try and pick Captain Twig there? I mean, like you said, you knew you had an idea they're probably at the fire giant there, but I guess with no wall coverage for Trifecta around the fire giant and the tier two now going down. Maybe you do go for the pick. At least he got the blink, I guess, out of Rob. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure Weekend missed the first sash onto Twig, and he needed to get that one so Moswell could properly Follow flank. Up. But Moswell gets there a little bit too late, and Captain Twig, since he wasn't hit by anything, he was able to blink out of there no problem. And exchanging a blink, well, it's not necessarily fun on the Rob, and he still has the Mystic Rush. He still has a way to effectively dive the back line. It's a 13k gold lead now for Rival at 24 minutes into the game. It starts to just get a little bit out of control at this stage. But you can see how the dip began at around the 18 to 20 minute mark. It was pretty close up until then. And on paper, Taco, this is an improvement for Trifecta. Like, this is against Rival, who are touted as one of the top teams in the league here. This is the best best performance I feel like we've seen out of him in a while. This is definitely looking like a revitalized Trifecta already. Hoping that we see some consistency, because I, I think that's been one of the bigger gripes of this team um, so far in Season 6. Still got objective problems though, and that, that concerns me a little bit, especially with the roster they have here. There's a lot of leaders on this team in my eyes of like, who've played around the scene a long time and know just how important objectives are. Fight okay to the back line to force Trifecta back. Meanwhile, Captain Twig is split pushing mid lane. All investment onto Fight okay, just walks away quite happily knowing that he consumed the last breath and is still alive. Ducky, meanwhile, CC chained pretty heavily and the burst after the fight is causing him problems. Phoenix goes down. Moswell turns it to the terror though. Looks for the pick onto Arkill who takes to the sky safely. And now Moswell could be in a bit of a tricky spot too. But Final K will finally fall down to weaken. Ooh, Moswell just got bobbed right by Polar Bear Mike and Captain Twig from behind. Weekend, though, going to push forward with that Ionic. That's going to be a quick and easy double kill for the Neja. Ionic also getting credit for Panda Cat. And what looked like a, a possible power play opportunity for Rival has now been completely turned around. Trifecta just ran at Rival. Got to give credit to Ionic there with the tail end of that play. The blink in, double kiss on two different targets. Really set up Weaken to get one of them and the Ionic the other. Important play. It doesn't save the Phoenix on the left-hand side, but it does stop more Phoenixes being taken, which is very important at this stage. But I can't help but wonder if, even after finding all those picks, how much does this truly benefit Trifecta? Yes, it gives them some time to, I think, push out that left side and not have to worry about the fire minion waves. Um, so to say, but they don't really get to take down a T2 of their own. They get a T1 tower at, at best, maybe? And even then, 500 gold to everybody doesn't really make up for a whole lot when you're this far behind in gold. It's about surviving, though. I think it's the more important thing. The base still standing overall in the grand scheme of things. Sure, Phoenix on the left-hand side, but with a 13k deficit and you only lose one Phoenix, that's where you got to like, well, that's a bonus, I guess. We don't lost all the Phoenixes at this point. But once the base gets breached, it becomes very concerning for compositions that are composed of so many squishy gods. I, I don't think that Trifecta have the best defensive options this game with their current draft. And I think it's only going to become more noticeable on this next Phoenix Siege attempt from Rival, whether it's mid or right side, that they 
try to take a look at first. It's going to be tough for Trifecta to continuously hold on with so many melee base guards. It's a good point. I think the one thing as well is Trifecta, because it's two assassins, two mages on this team, Mages, Assassins, and Guardians, to be fair, really do, are susceptible to silences that can shut down a lot of what they can do. They need those abilities. And one elbow drop from Fine OK silences whoever's in that area, causes a bit of a problem. And that's exactly what happened on the left side Phoenix. Yeah. It gave Rival just enough time with Trifecta pushed back to take down the Phoenix. And while Freya is typically Not known for being one of the worst Phoenix pushers, the fact that Rival were still able to breach the base relatively easily isn't necessarily a good look for Trifecta. We can sashed onto Mike there. Tap caps and Twig gonna ult onto Weaken actually, but didn't really connect as well as he would have liked. Yannick meanwhile banished in mid lane. Fine OK tries to collapse too, but Yannick walks away unscathed for now. Rival really just trying to pressure the red buff there, steal it away, which was done. More importantly, they want to get for the Fire Giant again. And war coverage another time is all rivals around that area. I think Trifecta have to contest this next Fire Giant. They can't afford to let another one go rival's way because it's already tough enough trying to, I think, battle back in a lot of these engagements. And one of their best fights could possibly come inside of that Fire Giant pit. I was going to say, do you, do you reckon this is a good idea for Trifecta? This is a jungle fighting FG? team now for Trifecta. They should take every single jungle fight possible possible because there's a lot of chaos that could ensue between a Naja, Morgan, and Sir Ket. Well, at the moment, the closest ward for a teleport potentially out of Ducky on the left-hand side is, well, basically his own back harpies, I think, at this stage of the game. But I think you're right. Trifecta should be looking to fight this Fire Giant with how good their team is in the jungle. At the moment, though, Ducky is still on this left-hand side, pushing out Fire Minions. Phoenix is about to respawn there. Fire Giant started up. Still a normal Fire Giant, not enhanced yet. It's not 30 minutes in. Rival were actually looking for a fight. You could tell they expect Trifecta to be here, and they didn't commit. Instead, it's all in on Moswell, who has to turn into Terra. Gets hit through the space and time, incidentally, by Panda Cat, which worked out pretty well. Ducky still hasn't turned up to this fight yet. He's pushed out left a little bit more, but the rest of Trifecta on the run from Rival, who have all collapsed in on Weaken. Oh, no. For Weaken, that Windfire and Wheels was almost catastrophe, but luckily, the rest of Trifecta is going to be able to bail him out with Wowie stop time. Last breath onto Polar Bear Mike as he's forced to jump away now with the Fafnir. A complete disengage so far, but Rival still may be ready to pull the trigger. But look at the ult situation. Trifecta used four of the ults that were in the fight. Ducky was on the left-hand side, so couldn't. Meanwhile, Rival only used Fido K's Chuck Ultimate, which is almost back up, by the way, and Panda Cut's Yarn Assault. Twig, Mike used his, obviously, but that'll be up soon as well. Ducky trying to do what he can now that he's been able to rejoin Trifecta on this right-hand side, and... Honestly, that might have been the best possible play overall for Trifecta. Sure, they had to expend a lot of their team fighting ultimates in order to survive, but the fact is nobody died. So Ducky spending all that time in left lane pushing out those fire minion waves means that Rival lose their power play from the fire minions. And I think more importantly too, Taco, is the, the next fire giant. The fire giant's going to be an enhanced now as well as it's 30 minutes in. So it's not as easy as it once was for Rival to maybe take this one down without a couple of problems. And this is where it gets really scary when dealing with Trifecta because granted, we've touched on this, their melee range for the most part, they've got to get close to Rival and that's not easy to do, but it's a lot easier to pick members from Rival when they're forced to be in the jungle to defend this enhanced Fire Giant. Speaking of Rival a little bit more, their, their composition for Siege and Fire Giants isn't the greatest either, really, is it? Is Freya good no, enough for this? No, Panicat on that Giannis, Unstable Vortex through space and time, it's nowhere near as reliable as Moswell on the Morgan. I, I think that there is ample steal opportunity here for Trifecta and Rival know it, which is why they're giving Trifecta the respect here and not automatically pulling that enhanced Fire Giant. Well, gold doesn't matter too much as we're approaching the 30 minute mark now. Pretty much everyone reaching max potential in terms of build. Just a couple of starters behind for Trifecta. But incidentally, it's kind of on their supportive gods anyway, so it won't be too doom and gloom. Rival will take an incidental Pyromancer though, not the most important objective at this stage. A bit of extra mobility from base though can never harm. Wowie, got the three rings online now for the Kronos as well. So that's going to be a lot more power involved in those autos. And Rival even trying to take this opportunity to back, probably want a little bit more ward vision. Keep in mind, though, there is an Oni Fury spawning relatively soon. And Rival might even look to make that their primary objective, probably feeling as a well for starters i think gold fury pit because it's more open yeah. would be a much more ideal engagement for rival because it would prevent trifectas 
assassins from being as dangerous since there's, I mean, it's a lot more clear which direction they're coming from. Final kill is wrapped around the back of Trifecta and gets a bit punished for that as the Sash comes in from weak and two. Ring toss is pretty healthy to cause some problems. Space and time used by Panda Cat to try and get the reinforcements in quick and then by oh my did they get in quick. Twig in and out. Ionic meanwhile was just too far forward then and got split but will escape with the abilities of Sir Cat and that mobility. Twig on Tim but didn't find a target. Moswell meanwhile in a world of her Orkill gets the kill and soon after uses his ult defensively to get away. We can jump it in though, looking for the kill on Mike. Not enough, Ionic next to him with a blink and he'll secure it. Our kill now under pressure, no beads, no Aegis, no life. Trifecta get two kills on rival. Where do they go now? Uh, Trifecta got the two kills. They should go for the Oni Fury. I think it's way too risky for Trifecta to make an attempt towards that enhanced fire giant with their surviving members here. But Wowie's perfectly topped up. He's got more than enough shred potential against this Oni. And to get that boosted minion waves pushing into Rival could also give Trifecta leverage around that enhanced fire giant pit. So long as they stop Rival from backing, they might have a serious opportunity to either take the Enhanced Fire Giant while those waves are pushing, or maybe even just look to pick off Rival. Really good play overall then from Trifecta to hold out in this game. And now with the Oni Fury, like you said, the minions coming down the left-hand side will cause some problems, give him a bit more pressure there. So maybe they can get some wards up now at the Fire Giant, try and look to get on the aggressive. Their composition for doing Fire Giant, is that a little bit healthier? I think it's got a lot more burst right. uh, in comparison to Rival. Uh, Rival's got Orkill and Panda Cat. Well, Mike's going to be the biggest helping hand Coerce, for Rival right? here because he's got Coerce, he went for the Frenzy. But I'm almost starting to wonder if this Frenzy might have actually worked against Rival. Uh, another sprint might have been a, a little bit more ideal here in terms of creating space for Rival to kind of work in. Because right now, Trifecta are getting to just dive relentlessly against Rival and they're actively pushing them back. You see the right side, that pressure allowed. Trifecta will take a tier one tower. And you can see the Moswell's trying to use this stealth to try and find a stun on any target that becomes presentable. Wraps into the jungle, sees Twig, won't find the stun. Yannick was there with him too. And I like the fact that Yannick's trying to keep pace with Moswell there to make sure he's protected if possible. Help him get out of the situation. Absorb some of the damage too. At this stage, Yannick on the circuit, pretty tanky with that build. Something else that's also been hurting Rival in a lot of their recent team fights is panic has through space and times. They are just not connecting. I think we've seen maybe one or two ultimates from Panic Cat that have made a difference because they hit. And I think the main thing, though, from the, the space attempts that we've seen out of Panda Cat, they've not really been four kills, though. They've been for the mobility factor, right, to help teammates out. I don't know. That last one looked a lot more like Rival right. wanting to go in and Panda Cat just not finding the hit markers that they needed. Because through space and time it is probably one of Rival's better range tools to utilize against Trifecta's comp. Pretty well, she look at weakened right now, but hold on. Moswell under pressure has to immediately turn into Rival and all away space and time. Got fired looking for the cleanup kill. That won't help get the kill, but the pulls may help for Mike to jump on through. He's going to find Ionic, but meanwhile, it's Ducky that's getting pressured by our kill. And Terra now off the table. Final kick uses the port force to rerun and Wowie. And Wowie's going back into a danger zone. Luckily, he'll get a reset on his abilities. But he won't get a chance to use a single one thanks to the unstable, uh, the unstable Vortex and the shots out of Northern Lights. Wow, he might have been better off not even bothering with the rewind. Uh, I don't think anyone else from Rival outside of Captain Twig was really in position to try and punish him for that one. But at the end of the day, it's going to be Rival taking down that enhanced fire giant. Trifecta could not stick around. We can try to bring down that T2 Tower mid lane instead. By Trifecta, a little bit of time from Rivals push down mid, but unfortunately, won't even get that. I will say that burst of the fire giant from Rival was a little bit quicker than I expected it to be as well. So maybe you know the the, the fire da damage, the fire giant wasn't as difficult for Rival as I first thought here. Fine, okay, gonna lead in the charge for Rival. We're looking to end game one off this push. Ducky and Wowie still dead for a few more seconds, but have they got the damage to bring it down? Panda Cat kept away in the back line as we can at least kept Panda Cat busy for a moment, but not long enough as he falls down to him. But the Titan still isn't being reset. Rival managing to juggle aggro just long enough. And at the end, Trifecta just didn't have enough AoE damage. Uh, so it was just too much, I think, trying to deal with all of Rival with the Enhanced Fire Giant on top yeah. of that. Uh, the Enhanced Fire Giant was also one of the big reasons why they shredded through that Mia Phoenix no problem. 
got to remember, even without the minion waves, you don't need that with that 50% being removed on the backdoor protections. Trifecta did look a little bit more comfortable, and they've got smiles on their faces that week. And that's not normally what I've seen out of week and when they've lost <laughs> games just lately. So it's a good little bit of a note there. They were very single target focused, though, Trifecta, weren't they? It, it was comp. for how much single target focus they had and for how little they were actually able to find picks. Mm. I, I think that that was a little bit of a concern, but it was evident that there have been significant improvements from this team overall. I know that it's still relatively early on and that it's only been one game so far, but I, the fact is, I, I definitely think that this team had way more coordination than what we've seen from them in past weeks. Well, it's a good look for Trifecta, but it's still not good enough to find that win over Rival. So Rival take that first game. It wasn't comfortable for them, though, Taco, I don't feel. like They had a couple of issues in that, no. in that at certain stages. A Rival are not feeling the, the greatest after that one. For a team that holds themselves to, I think, such high standards, they looked a little bit questionable at, at times. And I, I think had this continued to drag on, there was possible upset opportunity for a Trifecta because they did have the Assassin burst damage that might have been enough, they just didn't find their chance. Game one in the bags. The desk is ready to take it back and see what they have to say about what happened there. Thanks, Hindu. Thanks, Taco. Trifecta looking a little bit better, I would say, in this one. It felt a little bit to me, though, totally like they sort of drafted a, a pick comp up against this dive comp from, from Rival, and it was getting some kills, but they never really got the lead. They are behind the whole game. Between the Sarket and the Naja, those were the picks that they were going for. They were relying on the late game Kronos out right. of Wowie. The damage was certainly there occasionally in the team fights. The problem was that the objective control wasn't there from Trifecta. They did a great job of defending defending their own blue buff around that 14 minute mark where mm -hmm. everyone rotated down. The uh, the team fights with the Terra's Earth and Fury was just great. Yes. They found that initial pick onto not only Final K, later on onto Captain Twig, but the problem was they didn't even get the uh, tier one tower on the right. This was such a big play, though. This is where Mazel was trying to sneak in on Polar Bear Mike with the hammer. And we were talking about it. Did he recognize Mazel was there? Was he trying to hammer Ionic? Either way, that disrupts that whole initiation and turns the fight around for Rival. That was a big play, too. And now we see this fire giant that rival essentially 50 50'd on. I still can't get over the fact that teams are doing this. Like, look how many opportunities for a steal. Like, a ring bounce, an unfortunate ring bounce, could have stolen that alone. The reasoning why rival forced that, well, I looked back at it, is because Panic Cat was reviving 15 seconds before Moswell. That was a four on four engage. Now, granted, PBM playing the Fafnir, has the AoE coerce for the attack speed, has the Frenzy to allow that objective to go down quicker, but that's still a 50-50 gamble. If Rival lose that objective, Trifecta are basically back in the game. And that's such an interesting point in the game too, because around the 17 minute mark, about a minute or so before that fight ends up happening, Rival gets the Gold Fury, and then they start fighting around the Pyromancer because Trifecta forced that engagement. Mm -hmm. Trifecta do at least get a pick there, but then Rival answer it right back and kind of force Trifecta out. Then they pull that FG. And Trifecta were trying to, you know, get something out of nothing, squeezing yes. water out of the cactus, because when the Gold Fury was down, like you mentioned, doing that Pyromancer was a great call, knowing that Rival invested some ulties onto Trifecta. They used the Fafnir ultimate to get that initial gold fury after the fact. And then they also baited out the Chalk ultimate, trying to engage with a Cobra's Kiss. They baited out Panda Cats through space and time, which also was off the mark. So they reset, they found the pick, but they still were never on top of the objective control. At 23 minutes into the game, Rival had seven totem of coups, two Furies, two Fire Giants, while Trifecta had zero on each category. Yeah, and, and yet again, I think they allowed for this soul lane matchup to not quite go in their favor. I think both of these gods were good at the points in the game when you expected them to. Fine, okay, dominated the landing phase up against Ducky, and then Ducky did fine as the Terra in the team fighting stage of the game. Maybe not great, but it just continually seems weird to me that they kind of put Ducky in these spots where it's difficult for him to come out on top. I mean, you were talking about it, there were definitely some points earlier on where they gave him some winning matchups, but it does feel like time after time they put Ducky in these tough situations. They're thinking about team fights, I guess, and they want a sacrificial lamb. With Yannick known to play aggressive supports recently, you keep that style up. As long as he's rotating around with Weaken, it could allow Moswell the freedom that he needs to pop off in that game. Sure. The problem was they couldn't find those early picks where they really needed it to get Moswell right. in that comfy spot. So as a result, Ducky is just kind of there chilling, farming. He's losing a lot of gold under the tower, which isn't why they really lost. In fact, that it's actually what led them into to defending their own blue buff was because of the Surt Cat for Yannick, because of Ducky on the tower, but there was no tier one tower after the fact. All the objectives went for Rival. 
and moving to the picks and bans then for game number two. The last thing I want to ask about game one, though, Tolly, is that, I mean, I know it's a small thing, but the beginning of the game, Ducky didn't seem completely comfortable on kind of stopping that minion wave for yes. when it met early. It, it, do you think that's a, like a slight sign that maybe it's not 100% practiced him on that Terra? Or, or did you see anything there? It's definitely a sign of that regard because it's so easy of a mechanic to practice. You can literally go into a custom game, load the lobby with bots, and then just rinse and repeat, constantly practice that uh, wall minion block, but instead he missed two minions, which isn't, you know, the end of the laning phase by sure. any stretch, but it's not perfect. You know, being in the SPL, you have to be able to min-max literally everything between your build, between your rotations, even between how you start off the laning phase. Especially in a PvE mechanic like that, yes. right? I mean, there, there's so little variance in it that I, I agree that if, if, if that is the thing you're drafting and going for, you know, it should at least be clean. As now we move into this into the game number two, Trifecta in the first pick spot this time, yet again, the Aphrodite ban, yet again the Merlin ban here for Rival. Rival, I believe, banned the Jormungandr with their second ban last time. Aphrodite was that first ban for Trifecta. We'll see if they want to go with the Habaw ban yet again, and they absolutely do. So, so far, things are about the same as they were last time. So I don't expect maybe the Terra first pick from Trifecta, but Rival do force that off the table, knowing that Jormungandr is still up. I think this is a bait from Rival. They're expecting Trifecta to obviously draft the Jormungandr, and then Rival to respond back with Kronos and Hercules. That would be a pretty strong response. Anything you can do where you can be more, where you can know more what your opponent's going to do definitely helps. If you ban this Terra, kind of dangle that Yorm, and they pick it, then that makes life easier for Rival because they can kind of get them to do exactly what they want. And Trifecta, they pick that Yorm and Gunder up. This is likely for Ducky, but it certainly could still go to Iana. I almost wish that Trifecta drafted Kronos instead because while we had a fantastic game sure. in those team fights, there was a couple of picks around that purple buff team fighting where they got the early kill onto both people. BM and Arkel because of the setup, the Naja circuit allowing Kronos to really thrive. But now yeah, it's going to be Arkel's turn. Kronos though now coming in for for Rival and and there was a small moment where Pretty well we got a little bit behind because Arkel didn't mercy. rotate to the team fight around mm -hmm. the FG. I think I think he just stayed and kind of pushed up dual lane for a long time and got ahead. But for the most part, Wowie did have a good game this time though. That magical hunter, magical ADC, however you want to refer to them for Rival are both there. Kronos and Freya about a scary as it gets in terms of damage dealer. And now for Trifecta, you already have Yorm. Can you afford to pick Fafnir here too? Because you can't give that up. Yes, I was going to mention that you can't allow Rival to get Fafnir. No way. Because they're going to pick it with just a Freya. Now with Kronos and Freya, yeah, obviously they're going to go for a Fafnir. They're going for all these objectives. The early 15-minute Gold Fury, the early 17-minute Fire Giant. The objectives are only going to go down faster if you allow the pick to go through. But Rival's backline is exposed now. They know that's a Kronos. They know it's a Freya. Right. They oh, need hey, to Sam. find a way to limit that late game success. Go for some early pick drafts to abuse that factor. That maybe not try and let them get to that point where these mage carries are online. Not a bad plan. As Trifecta don't seem too worried about the Fafnir. I think I just saw Polar and Mike say it out loud. <laughs> I'd be very surprised they don't pick it here. But Naja and Jingwei, these are some strong picks. Clearly the aggression is what they want, which is why it would have been tough for them, Take I think, to go the double guardian the in that enemies. spot. And maybe that's why they don't want to grab it. But either way, they get away with it. Robin comes through for rival which means Trifecta have another chance to ban away the Fafnir. This is still an idea of uh, sitting on Moswell with a Robin. They know Fafnir is going to be banned away. I'd be shocked if Trifecta let that go Me through, too. honestly. So the idea is to still focus on Moswell, even banning away the Ro Morgan, because Robin not too successful about diving the Morgan. Also, you don't want to have Trifecta turn into the Robin, so focus out Moswell. Well, the Morgan and New Wall are two ban two picks that Moswell's played a lot of. So is the Merlin. The next one that he's played the most for us has been the Jean-Cui. I don't know how much you want to pick that, though. When you're going into the Robin, he can dive on you pretty easily. The Fafnir ban, the least surprising thing I've ever seen in my entire 26 years of life has now rival up inside. Where else they want to go with their frontline presence? They still need something for Polar Bear Mike and for Fine OK. Oh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Finch. It's not, but thank you. Happy 26th birthday, Finch. But it's no surprise <laughs> that yet again Trifecta in the secondary ban phase continued to ban out PBM. In the first game, it was the Horus and the Baron. This time around, obviously not wanting to give up the Faf. Oh, this is a Snaplock Baron then, right? Yeah, you got it. I mean, it, they, it, That's what I would <laughs> think as a result. Is like Being able to get movement speed is nice and chase down potential with life of the party. But I think PBM's no, options are very vast. He can sure. almost go anything that he wants. Sir Cat is still open if he wants to look for those early game picks. 
Fenrir could be another option. Sure. You talked about how good Chalk could potentially be into the Morgan, so it's interesting that in a game where they banner out, then we do see Rival go back to the Osiris. So I wonder how much of it was, you know, worrying about that potential Morgan pick, why they picked up Chalk. In this game, they didn't have to worry about it. They go right to Osiris, get a ton of pressure for Rival over there in that solo lane for fine okay. And very likely, it'll be into the Jormungandr, and Osiris can bully him around too. And outside of Chalk countering the Morgan with a big AoE silence ultimate, you also got to consider that anti-attack speed onto the Kronos in the last game. Right, was they got a, both of those mage ADCs this time, so they don't have to worry. Yeah, pretty big factor in terms of why the Chalk was picked last game. So I think that final count of the Osiris is going to be looking to bully out Ducky. I think that's going to be Jormungandr in that solo lane. I don't necessarily know if Ionic wants to stray away from his general assassin picks. Yeah, I would be surprised if it came there. I mean, maybe there's a chance that Maul's Wall is comfortable on Jormungandr, and maybe they're floating that mid even. I mean, that is something that we've seen. They've got the Jingwei and the Jormungandr. Maybe there's an Awilish in their future there too, because they they can put the, the Naja support. Much less likely now, though, with the Kepri locked in, so probably won't be the Awilish as Ryan comes in. This is something we have seen Mazel play some, not really in Season 6 yet, so he has such a small sample size. This is a Season 5 thing for him. This was the MVP pick between that Splice versus Rival set, the Raijin. I believe it won all but one game, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So Raijin on Mazel, he's very comfortable with this pick. Good self-peel with the Thunder Drums being able to taunt or push Fear away, so I'm not expecting Mazel to have a difficult time especially with the Kepri for safety. Yeah, this team can team fight together quite nicely. The Kepri can keep them alive if need be with that Scarab's Blessing, and they've got some control. But Rival's still waiting on what they want to get for Polar Bear Mike. Achilles. Achilles. That's what I want to see, Achilles for Polar Bear Mike. Being able to execute through that Scarab's Blessing is never a bad idea, knowing... Ah. Oh. I'll give you half credit for this if they lock it in. Hey, I did call Hercules, but I called Kronos Hercules to start. That's we? right. You said that, too. I think I think I can still give you credit for this one if they do lock this Hercules in. It makes a ton of sense. You've got these mage, uh, mage auto attackers that you're worried about, and then you add in Robin, formerly a warrior, now an assassin, Osiris, and then Hercules. I mean, all this aggressive physical damage with still some decent control. It makes it so hard to itemize efficiently. I don't see a world where Ducky survives after getting Driving Strike. Right. He's just going to get blown up. Fen, uh, the Freya and the Kronos is going to have an easy field day, especially when Jormungandr sees this frontline composition and builds physical defense. Probably going to rush Dynasty Plate Helmet. Wouldn't be surprised to see Breastplate of Valor on top. That's right. If you, if you looked at the patch notes, you know that that 2, Consuming Bellows, is going to be getting changed. But that's not in effect just yet. Jormungandr will certainly still be swinging in terms of damage. So there's a good chance Ducky might do that sort of bruisery build that we have seen with these Jormungandrs, where they'll pick up things like the Void Stone, like you said, the Dynasty Plate Helm, and try and be a bit more in between. And seeing this draft between Rival and Trifect, I'm expecting a lot of dominance in that 2v2. A Hercules and an Osiris up sure. against a Kepri and a Yarmagunder. Maybe Ionic doesn't even go in the solo lane. Just honestly, sacrifice Ducky and just <laughs> try to get Wowie ahead. Good news, though, this is a team that does, I mean, that Raijin can apply the Divine Ruin well. Maybe that helps against some of these healers over here for, for, for Rival. Trifecta do have some areas to try and grab this win, but we get ready to move into game number two. Let's get it back over to Hindu and Taco. Thanks so much, Finch and Tilda. I think Rival definitely threw a cur curveball towards Trifecta here. Kronos and Freya, first two picks locked in. It's like, well, you don't get either of these. And I'm surprised they didn't go for the Fafnir. I heard the desk talking about that team instead they went for the Raven option. I, I think the primary reason why they wanted to avoid the Fafnir is because Trifecta had that Yorming under, and the Yorm, I think, is going to be excellent at kind of displacing Rival's backline. Fafnir maybe not going to be able to provide the peel necessary, so... Mm. Instead of worrying about Peel, Rival are just going to worry about the damage instead. And they do have that Kepri as well. We'll see how that works out for Trifecta and Ionic this game. Obviously, with the Hercules pickup for Rival, that's definitely going to be piloted by Polar Bear Mike. And we'll see what he can do in the solo lane start, because that's where the supports have begun for the majority of the first phase of the SPL. Curious to see if Polar Bear Mike might try to look for a level 1 speed buff invade. It's not uncommon for Hercules yeah. to, to be a little bit more aggressive at the start, but... For right now. Well, he does have to blink as well, so there's definitely a potential of it, but I think Trifecta have an idea some shenanigans could happen on that right hand side with how grouped up they are. And to be fair, Ducky is taller than he's ever been in his life right now. Mike? You can see other walls and everything. Look at him. I, I can't tell what Mike's thinking here because of the way that he's shifting he around yeah. this choke point. It looks like he's trying to not get spotted. 
they, my trifecta. They can sniff it though. I, I know for a fact they have an idea because trifecta still have multiple members on this side if required. Am I going to run around behind? The solo laners here, and in solo laners, I mean support and solo lane. Ducky going to meet fine okay. That matchup, Osiris versus Jormungunder. I mean, it's definitely a beatdown session for Osiris onto the Jormungunder, but I don't really think there's kill potential for either. Maybe ever so slightly favoring Osiris there just because of consistent CC chains. I think this is toast, though, and Ionic knows it as well, trying to prevent a Hercules with a driving strike from... <laughs> Full clearing that blue buff early on. Ducky, though, taking the right initiative after having cleared out the wave already, but has got to be careful. Only gets the smalls in exchange. Won't have an opportunity on the Norman Gunner to utilize a blue buff. And that's the whole situation. The, the last pick, Hercules from Rival, it was held for a minute or two. You saw Anatoly asking for potentially an Achilles here. I like either in that situation, especially when you're up against a Capri at level one. Capri's not the greatest. I mean, his wave clear can be okay with the blessing. But outside of that, he's not got much coming to the fight. He's there. That's he's, he's mostly there to just show presence, I think, in the early game and, and show that Ducky isn't alone in solo because Rival, obviously, having uh, two members over there, so Trifecta wanting to match that so that Ducky doesn't get heavily out-pressured here. But Moswell, speaking of getting pressured, getting pressured at his own back, Harpies by Captain Twig. He's only level two, by the way. This is Rival just trying to get an early experience lead as quick as possible. Difference is, though, Trifecta. And the one's up in gold as it stands for now, so just keep an eye on that as that continues on. Build options between the two. Well, we do see the Kronos in the mid lane and Freya in the duo lane. Uh, their build's obviously going to be slightly different based off which role they're going to be in of mid and solo. Uh, sorry, Joe, I'll see how this plays out, though. Are you surprised by Kronos in mid over Freya? I think I would have preferred Rival to do a, a good old-fashioned swap a Rooney on those two. Uh, if Pandacat was on the Freya as opposed to the Kronos, I, I think that Kronos into Jingwei is a much more punishing matchup for the Jingwei. Oh, really? Um, Freya, there's What's not the really much kill potential against the Jingwei, but Kronos actually has kill potential because of the stop time, the fact that you can dive a little bit deeper into that Jingwei with the rewind, too, as that threat that you can't necessarily take the 1v1 on Jingwei um, okay. right away at level 5. Even with Airstrike, it, it can still be kind of tough, I think, for uh, Jingwei to survive a Kronos there. Definitely a lane matchup, though, Freya versus Jingwei, where Freya's going to bully the lane early in a 1v1 and just with pressure, and then uh, allow Jing to sit under the tower, which is fine. Fine, okay. Meanwhile, he's going to get abducted by Ionic for a second. Ducky with a follow up as we can collapse into on into. They're looking for the blue buff invade. Twig is here with some good punches and trying to fix some faces. Mike, meanwhile, with the driving strike. Didn't really connect, I don't think, but he at least got the kill. First blood, the way of rival. Make that two kills for Polar Bear. Mike, supports are having fun. Absolute disaster for Trifecta, though, on that blue buff defense. He you don't expect triple. to see. Many teams actively trying to invade against the Nija, but even with the ring bounce perfectly connecting with that juggle between Captain Twig and Final K, there just wasn't enough damage. The 3v3 is inherently in Rival's favor. Trifecta should have probably just forfeited that blue. I think that's the issue there, is their composition is just not going to be the greatest. Uh, a level 3, level 4, a Yorm, a Nija, and a Capri versus an Osiris, a Raven, and a Hercules. Well, well, okay, excuse me. Excuse you. Robin the fake How assassin. How dare you? Yeah, exactly. Well, he's an assassin now. He was a fake warrior. He felt like an assassin, so they made him an assassin. Yeah, but he's still as tanky <laughs> as a warrior, so True. it's almost like... Oh, man. Good, good stuff all around, though, from Rival. I, it was great recognition, I think, to punish Trifecta there for trying to get defensive on their blue. Sometimes you just have to cut your losses short, and for Trifecta, they end up taking an even bigger one since they try to contest. Yeah, I think the one, the one way to think of the Capri Jormungandr's decision on Osiris is trying to abduct him at level one, which is, what, half a second, something like that, in terms of how long the silence pull last. What's Yorm going to do for follow-up there? There's not yeah. going to be enough burst to kill He's Osiris a... at that point. Unfortunate, but Trifecta's decision to try and defend the blue, I could understand the idea. You know, Ducky had the moral support because Ionic knew that Ducky had the thought process to try and help him. And sometimes it's the thought that really counts in these types of circumstances. Well, the one thing we've seen so far, though, is that Trifecta are quite happy to leave Ducky on an island. And he's kind of spent most of the year on an island, so to speak, with how this has been going on. In terms of his picks, he's getting Carol picked a lot. They're picking his pick early on. And meanwhile, Final K okay in this set is having the opportunity to turn it around. Earthbreaker there towards the end didn't hit. It was nearly onto Ionic. But Ionic on that Capri under pressure by Captain Twig. Didn't need the up down at the end of the day, but now he's in trouble because of using it. Moswell. At least gets the drums out, but Mike's on a killing spree. 
Hercules into play. It's four to one. Could be five to one in a minute as Weekend now in trouble. Weekend's gonna get hit by the Earthbreaker, and that'll be an easy alley oop for our kill to clean up afterwards. And now, with two picks having already gone the way of Rival, Trifecta are also gonna simultaneously lose their red buff in the process. All of this map pressure is heavily picking up. I, I, I was gonna say slowly but surely giving Rival the lead, but this isn't slow at all from yeah. Rival. This is non-stop. I agree. Like they're taking two steps at a time is kind of what's happening here. Five to one then. Gold lead, as you see, 2,000 at less than six minutes in. Normally we wouldn't really talk about golden experience league, but 2,000 at that stage, pretty impactful. Trifecta, meanwhile, just, just about getting some of their ultimates online now. Anything that's 1,500 or higher, 10 minutes and under, does not feel good uh, for the team that's on the, you know... The losing side. The losing side, yeah, <laughs> especially for the support. Ionic just now going to be hitting level 5. Same thing for Weekend. Hasn't really had much early game opportunities, and it's surprising that I'm saying that, considering that Nijan, Raijin, those two picks alone scream aggression. It's just yeah. that Polar Bear Mike with his Hercules has been so all over the place. Trifecta have just not had room to breathe. Not really, but now I think this is the window where Trifecta would have just liked to have farmed up until this point. Because now that Yannick has that ultimate available, the revive can really turn things around against this rival composition. If they try and dive in on a target now, and the Onyx there in the right position to use the ultimate. Whoever's being focused is going to be okay. I also have some concerns, though, that the person who's being focused is going to be Yannick? okay. But what happens to everybody else in the area? Rival have a nasty amount of burst between those three warriors alone. And that's not even factoring in Final Kane not being an active participant most of the time. He's in solo lane still for quite some time longer for that laning phase. Twig, on the other hand, with Polar Bear Mike, is just such a insane double whammy from their burst. I just don't even know that Weaken even has an ideal target to try and go on in the early game. That's true. We'll see what exactly because it's like two warriors in Hercules and the Sash. You're not going to want those. Twig's going to be kind of hard to gank with his ultimate and the overhead kick to avoid some damage. Frey is going to ult to the sky if she gets pressured. Maybe Kronos, but then rewind. Oof. Well, I'm laughing as well. He baited himself a little bit there. As Jingwei, if you've got that persistent gust in front of you, even off of the Freya banish, when you try to agility forward, you're going to get hit by that persistent gust. Stopped his dash in. Uh, fortunately enough for Arkill. No, it was uh, intentional. Dash. He dashed on it to scare him away. Like, shoo, aha, I wasn't really going in. Well, if it had actually gone off, well, all that thought, though, Moswall could be in some trouble here. Excavate came out as well. Polar Bear Mike looking for a clean solo pick onto that Raijin and nearly had it. I, I agree. I actually think Mike fought the Earthbreaker connected with Moswell there and then while he was in the air threw the boulder out. But Moswell just managed to teleport away in time. Yannick was hanging around, however, just in case his ult was required. And he held on to it, trusting that his mid laner would survive. Beat still available for Moswell too. So it's not complete doom and gloom there. That experience lead, though, for Mike, pretty impactful. More importantly, the kills that he got has given him a nice chunk of gold. Look how far ahead he is in terms of getting those thieves online already. Yeah, this has like been really tough for Yannick, and it might even get even worse for Ducky here as he's forced into that World Worm ultimate. You just said he's under pressure. He's a worm that can just dive underground. I can't wait for the new skin to be seen. That's what I'm after. The, the little pushy? Yeah! Pushy Yarm in the solo end of the game. Yeah, but then it's not down. threatening. It's just cute. And that's cool. I mean, if you want to be cute and Listen, cuddly instead yeah. of fearsome hope, and ferocious. Listen, Taco, sometimes I can be cute and cuddly, okay? Just because I'm a savage all the time and everyone says I am, it doesn't mean I really am. So are you saying that Yorm is really just He's really He's just misunderstood, okay? He's just like me. Everyone seems to think he's mean and nasty and wants to end the world. No, he's just trying to do it for the right reason. He's like Thanos. Me, Thanos, and Yorm are all the same. You know, we just want things to get better. Yeah, I can agree. Actually, Megan. God, if I could clip my fingers, that'd be so much half fun. Half the pros disappear. Half of everyone, half the rank players disappear. It'll be great. It'll be so much fun. Maybe I do that. I'm gonna make that glove. If someone wants to, that'd be great. You really want to go for it? Oh man, Weekend. Oh, that was good. Ult. That was a really good ult from Weekend. Actually, times it with the driving strike to stay alive. The problem was, was Twig was there to follow up Ionic with the turnaround play to keep Weekend alive. This is all defensive from Trifecta here, and my oh my, they turn it into a kill. Weakens really quick thinking there with the Windfire wheels turn that play. All he had to make a snap lock yeah, decision. He, he was going to get whacked by the driving strike anyway and be displaced into the clutches of rivals. Yep. So 
Still took some of the damage, I believe, from that driving strike, but since he had Yannick waiting at the bottom, and that's where Rival has to be, I think, a little bit more self-conscious about the, the turn and burn situations. Mm. Moswell, though, I, I think, missed the memo of, hey, maybe we shouldn't fight here. I'm Moswell was like, yo, this is, this is easy day for me. All the abilities have been used on other people. Ah, oh, kill. Seeing that a lot of abilities were used, starts to get a bit of aggressive in the jungle here. He is level 12, doesn't, hasn't picked up his second relic just yet. But with a hasten ring, he's starting to feel confidence. Obviously, in the Jingwei match, we should be having this sort of situation. Hasten Ring's gonna make it tough, I think, for Wowie to try and box into the Spraya because it's just hard to find the autos when somebody doesn't have to worry about being slowed down during the duration of theirs. So, Wowie well, will just have to pick that his That was a hot blink from Mike, and the body blocks after the fact. He's just gonna keep him pinned in the wall. Polar Bear Mike showing what Hercules can really do in the right situation. That was just telegraphing the jump more than anything else. Moswan knew he was toast. Tries to get out some percussive damage, but it's just not going to be enough to really threaten anybody on Rival. Oh, worth breaking from Mike just after my boy. Mike definitely in that zone now that supports love to live in. When you start to land a couple of abilities, especially on someone like Hercules, if you get off to a good start on Herc, you, you get in the zone. If you miss the first few, it starts to give you troubles of confidence and uh, ability to really turn plays around. This is more than just a good start, though, for Mike. <laughs> really I mean, is. he's got 100% kill participation so far and is a big part of the reason why Trifecta have not had a chance to collect their red buff in a long time now, it feels. And Rival, they're not going to just stop at Trifecta's red. They're going to go all the way to the Gold Fury. And I'm looking at Secure from Trifecta. Well, they do have Moswell coming in with the ultimate available. We can going to come around the corner, blink in to try and get in range. Ring toss through. Rival get the Gold Fury. Woey after the fact with the airstrike repositions to try and put pressure on Mike. But it's all focused on Arkill, who doesn't get time to use his ultimate. Now Mike, who hung around a little bit long there. So it was a bit of an awkward pathing situation, I think, more than anything else. Go up here for two kills. Is that just even? Sweet revenge for Moswell, at least. And hey, sometimes that's all it really takes. It's not as good as a gold theory, plus the red buff, because Rival oh, are going to be able to pressure Trifecta on the map. But Trifecta being a little bit more proactive in this game, they might have lost that gold theory, but make up for it by sieging that T1 tower in duo. They may have gone a bit too far. Twig going to wrap around behind Woe and Moswell. Twig on the minion wave, so Trifecta know he's around here. And Twig is going to focus on the minion wave to make sure they can't pressure. Meanwhile, look at how much pressure Fine OK has found onto poor old Ducky on this right hand side here. Forced to use the World Serpent defensively. I was going to ask Taco, the, the Gold Fury going down for two kills, that Gold Fury is still rivals, right? It's still it's a credit and benefit for rivals. Moswell, though, going to be in a little bit of trouble, actually dashed into the stop time there from Panda Cat. And Panda Cat able to pull the bees out of that Raijin. Thought for a second that Mike was going to look for a dive opportunity, but backs off wisely after Ionic ends up revealing himself there in mid lane. Crazy fight there. On the right hand side, though, meanwhile, fine. Okay, we'll take a tier one tower. Rival, head into the jungle trifecta here and start to pressure. Back half is taken away on the right hand side. Blue buff suit to spawn. Ducky with no ultimate. Ducky driving strike. Ducky hit by the ult from Captain Twig. Ducky dead. That's all I really need to say over that one. Seven to four then as Polar Bear Mike gets himself his fourth kill. But on the bright side, Trifecta might have a chance to defend their red buff since Rival threw three different members at Ducky over there in solo, but that's a play that Rival can afford to make because sure, they lose the red buff timer, but Gold Fury is already down. Pyromancer could have been looked at by Rival possibly after that pick on the Ducky, but everybody wanted to back to base instead and spend their gold. Oh, kill with a quick sidestep to avoid the Sash and then punishes Weakened so heavily. Weakened gets upset and has to ult, need some reinforcement soon. But when I look at the map, it's Panda Cat that's on the scene first. Ionic will at least keep Weakened alive as Mon Moswell Thunder crashes in to put pressure onto Arkill. Arkill no ultimate, no Aegis, no life. Meanwhile, now Panda Cat taking on Moswell and the driving strike from Mike will make the difference there. Moswell now down and Woey running away. Ionic, meanwhile, he's not going to be able to do that. Luckily, Ducky's here to try and help him though. Ducky just looking to bring down Panicat in the process instead. Panicat doesn't have that rewind available, fast. but is a Kronos on the move. Ducky's having a tough time connecting with this Jormungandr ultimate. Gonna find the last tick and finally, this Kronos will end up falling. Same could be said though, as Captain Twig takes out Ionic on the backside. But Mike is one level behind Ducky and Ducky's trying to lurk in the waters away. Not even they lurk more than waters. And Ducky's still under pressure. He will fall down on this left hand side. In the grand scheme of things there though, Tackle, did anyone really come out on top in that engagement? Three for two. In a there? sense, 
Rival did because, I mean, they lost one less member, but more importantly, it's just preventing Trifecta from farming and catching up. All of these mini little skirmishes that Rival are actively forcing Trifecta to participate into mm. is time that the team could instead be spending trying to catch up in the in the experience department, especially, I'm mostly looking towards Ducky yeah. in that. And you look at Ducky, level 13, we were just saying how Mike was one level behind Ooh. him, now he's equal level. Ionic too. Yeah, level 10 to the level 13. I mean, that support difference isn't too bad. The def difference in the solo lane is really showing itself there. Meanwhile, everybody on Rival pretty much ahead in experience at this point. And while I understand Trifecta probably opt to take Ducky's pick first because he's comfortable with it. And it's Yorm, he's still... And it's Yorm, yeah. Yorm is strong, don't get me wrong, but I'm almost starting to wonder if it might be better for Trifecta to give Ducky something he can actually be aggressive with in solo lane. It's just been fine okay taking these hyper-aggressive matchups to spam into Ducky and, and really confine him to that T1 tower line that Rival are able to make plays elsewhere on the map because there's no pressure from Trifecta solo. Especially with how Rival have played the early as well. They've focused a lot of attention to the right hand side of the map. And then when the pressure has been relieved on the right hand side, they've switched it to the red buff. So they could look to try and re-secure that right hand side a little bit more. Sure, I'm not trying to say Yom's bad though as Moswell. Thunder crashes in on Mike and uses the ultimate as well. All this investment onto Mike so far, Root after the fact is good. And Mike just trying to buy himself a bit of time. All the while, Rival are going to get a tier one tower in mid. And Warwick gets annihilated by Twig. Ionic then gets annihilated by Arkill. And a tier two tower now under threat. Ionic just gets swarmed by all of Rival rotating in here. T2 tower going to be toast. Three members left to play defense, but there's no reason to keep pushing. Oni Fury is about to spawn, and Rival's aggression doesn't look so spontaneous anymore. No. They wanted that fight. They wanted Trifecta to use those ultimates. Moswell was the best former contest with the Tyco drums, and without it, Trifecta, no. They have no possibility of challenging this gold or Oni Fury. It is getting a little bit of a hand right now as they look to pressure Captain Twig on the right side. Rival will get the Oni Fury, and Twig just blinks away after the overhead kick. Bought him enough time there. You know it's doomed though when Mike, who is the support for Rival here. I know we've spoken about him a lot, but he's been a big impact in this game. He is higher level than everyone on Trifecta outside of the AD carry. His team is giving him the red buff. <laughs> that should Why say Why would you not? Mike, Mike's just well, in the zone, Well, Driving Strike just smacked so stupidly hard in the early game, and Mike took full advantage of that against Rival's comp. And it's only 365 damage, what are you complaining about? Plus the 90%. <laughs> What's but, uh, the issue we with this? We don't talk about it. And then the regen from the mitigate. Hey, but he's a support, right? Yeah. Hey, he was supporting season one. Hercules was one of the only warriors that actually got played in season one back in the day, along with Guan Yu and Sun Wukong were the other top twos. More so, though, Guan Yu and Sun Wukong definitely were there for the Hand of the God situation than anything else. Hey, on paper, it makes sense. It also makes sense for Ionic to respond with the Kepri for this uh, Hercules, I think. It's just that I don't think it's working as well for Trifecta because of how heavily outpressured Ducky was in solo that Rival just feel like they have an extra man. It does feel though, though, right? When you look at how the draft went too, Rival have Osiris and PBM on the Hercules in the 2v2 in solo and against Jormungunda and Capri. Clearly a huge advantage there, and clearly a huge advantage for Arkel as he powers through Weaken's health bar. Rowie has to run away, but walks straight into Final K and Captain Twig, who both used their ultimates. And talking about ultimates, he only can at least get an ultimate off, as Mike was very upset about the escape, but the red buff won't help him find a kill. Rival, meanwhile, will get a tier two tower on the left-hand side. And we could be going to a game three relatively soon with how this is looking here. Wow, he at least lives to see another day. A, a crazy chase as well. Really, that's on Captain Twig, probably kicking himself right now for overshooting the Mystic Rush. I think he put it, the targeter, for where he expected Wowie's agility to end without realizing that that ability was still on cooldown for Wowie. 14 to 6 then. Tier 2 towers down and left and the middle lane. Trifecta only have a tier 2 on the right hand side. And that's why Warwick's trying to defend right now. At least it looked like a 6 scare's blessing though. That was that was it a did, really was, clean ultimate good. from Ionic. I, I think that true. Ionic in this set so far has looked really good, all things considered. And I, I feel like it's important to highlight this as well because the last time Trifecta came out to play, it, it was it was pretty awful. I'm, yep. I'm not gonna lie. It, it just looked bad. But Trifecta now. Even though they're still not really pulling ahead over Rival or winning out on a lot of these team fights, they still look a lot better. Debatable. Like, 
I think they look a lot better in, than in what this they did. They're game, not making mechanical errors, I should clarify. I will agree. In game one, for sure. Game two is a little bit discombobulated again, but when you think about how they angered the Beast in Rival with how game one went, this is definitely the rival we expected to see today coming into fashion. I think that was... Game one was Rival softly not fully respecting Trifecta because they might have anticipated this is an easy set for us or, yep. or something like that. So Rival's thought it was a little cute from Trifecta, and then they're like, okay, let's show you what we really do. We can have to use his ultimate there to get away from Rival, who are going to chase him around, and Panda Cat won't give up a chase here. Not with all those rings online. You may have a speed buff. You've got no blink. You've got no ult, and Panda's still zooming around, chasing weak, and all the while, Rival focusing on the tier 2 tower. Mystic Rush from Twig will get the ultimate out of Wowie defensively. He had no beads available, still beads down. Marswell gets a good ultimate out of Ionic, though, and uses the Drums of War, but it won't keep the tier 2 alive. And now Ducky, the last man on the front line, is getting very low, and the World Serpent won't be in time. What's going on in the jungle? Let's check in with the other action on the left-hand side. Side as Panda Cat is still chasing Weaken all the way around the map, keeping him out of the fight. This was a four on four without Weaken. And now Mike should fall down on the right hand side at the very end. Oh, cancel that. It's Hercules. He's alive. Yeah, okay. Mitigate wounds Neat. is pretty good. No, really? And Weaken was not around to apply some more of that anti heal. Moswell had the Divine Ruin, but got taken down by Fine OK and Captain Twig. Not really much. Wiggle room left for this Ryzen. And despite how well Trifecta tried to bounce back here, Rival are, are just going to prevent all of that. There was no bouncing back on Twig actually popped off towards the end there. I think they were very happy with their performance overall. Definitely a bit more reinvigorated that Rival team after that game and how it went compared to uh, game one. That looked a lot more like what we expect to see from yes, Rival, I, I, I think, agree. for a, a team that's in their current standing position as, as well as just their current lineup. Well, don't get me wrong, I think Rival are definitely one of those teams that like to have a lot of fun. They'll talk a lot of fun on social media about maybe some jank picks and things. But when it comes down to it, they really do care about winning overall more than anything else. And if they underperform, they know it themselves and will step it back up. One thing's for sure though, Hindu, I, I think it's about time to get our kill off of this Freya pick. Really? The, the Freya is just too problematic. We can, can't gank it in the early game. He's already displayed two games in a row now of having issues trying to punish uh, our kill over there in duo and not only that but i also feel like the fact that they didn't even need panic in that last push as the chronos because of arkill's potency with the freya it just feels like too much right now well two games then to rival game two definitely one side of the fair let's go to the death to break it down Rival come in with a fury after that long game one and put game two to bed. But to be fair, two warriors and an assassin in the jungle and then two major ADCs, they'll do that if you let them. Yeah, I mean, and even that one assassin is a Robin, right? right. Like, so <laughs> it's like a hybrid kind of mix. Yeah. And think about fighting into an Osiris passive. That's kind of what happened when Final K was poking his head around Trifecta's blue buff, looking for the invade. At first, Trifecta had the three on two advantage, but... Yeah. That Osiris is too tanky, 16% physical mitigation, 8% magical, eventually PBM rotates in, picks off Weekend, and also picks off Ducky, and once Ducky dies in this little fight, like, already we're seeing a one-level advantage for the likes of Final K. He just continues that level advantage, getting about four or five levels in the mid-game. Yeah, would you wager that Osiris, Hercules, and Robin are pretty good at fighting at level three? Especially against the Kepri, <laughs> Jormungandr. Nasha is good at fighting that early game, but Kepri and Jormungandr, not as much. You know, it's so funny. I thought the reason that Trifecta didn't draft um, the Fafnir in that third slot was because they were worried about having two Guardians on the team and how little pressure that would mean. But then they got Kepri anyway. Anyway, who might even be less pressure, especially within that 2v2, and still got bullied around that exact same sort of way. So, I mean, they ended up being right. It, it, it didn't end up much mattering, but, like, they clearly just did not have an answer to that early pressure from Rival. No, definitely not. A great last pick of the Hercules. We thought that it yeah. was going to be uh, the Fafnir in game two, but instead it was the Fafnir in game number one. Right. So I think that the switch up from PBM, we were mentioning how Panic Hat is versatile, how Final K is versatile, but a passive Guardian for objectives into a very aggressive warrior support to find the kills. Rival already with a two-game lead, looking very clean to finish this one out. Yeah, Rival definitely came out looking stronger on the back end of this one. Again, this is from 
game one, yes. though, this stuff here. But uh, yeah, but, this, uh, the, the, but they definitely did come out on top in this one. It wasn't particularly close. Like, right, no. at least game one, I think Trifecta were able to hang on. Throughout the early game, even though Trifecta got some picks, I would not have called game one close until that sort of mid to late game when they were able to kind of normalize things back out. But in this game, they never had that opportunity. I mean, the only time I thought Trifecta looked good in a fight was when it turned out that Rival had dove all the way past, like, those back harpies, like, in between the tier two and Phoenix almost. Like, that far down, they got a pick. I mean, it, it really was all Rival. Yeah. Yeah, Rival was definitely feeling themselves yes. <laughs> being that aggressive and that deep. And, you know, even a team like Trifecta will punish you for that. And you got to give uh, credit to where credit is due. I think that Trifecta is a team to capitalize on those mistakes. In game number one, extending the game to 36 minutes. I, too, didn't think that game looked close with how big of a lead Rival had. But Trifecta right. were still able to battle into it, play defense. Moss won the Morgan, getting respect banned in game number two. I think that's been the idea behind Rival in this Robin pick is to not... Yeah. Yes. allow Moswell any comfort. And that's what I think they did so well in this game, too, was not just limit Moswell's god pool, but they did better. The only thing Trifecta did, I think, particularly well, which is that sort of pick-based yeah. composition. They played with this early aggression and never let Trifecta even get their feet underneath them in game number two. So a very, very strong performance there from Rival. Can they keep it going, though, in game number three? Let's move into the picks and bands, where Trifecta have elected to switch things up. They'll now be in the second pick. Rival will be first. So the question is, are we still going to see the Merlin ban and the Jormungandr ban? I mean, Rival don't have to do that this time. They definitely don't, knowing that those are both open. But if I'm Trifecta, you don't ban either of those, so that way you can get one or the other. Sure. But I kind of don't want to face off against the Merlin. Not so, from Panda Cat, no. no, definitely not from Panda Cat. Honestly, anyone from the SPL even <laughs> getting, true. you know. Like, All 10 of our, our mid lane players are certainly very competent Merlins. Yes. You know, even though Moswell hasn't played in a couple of weeks compared to the other mid laners, he still has that at his arsenal. But Rival, really understanding the strength of Trifecta's early game power, so wanting to strip away the nausea. Robin being banned by Trifecta, finally. They throw some respect to him. Look at Twig giving him the shoulder shrug. He's like, all right, man, they want to ban. All right, yeah, I mean, I don't need it. I got Erlang Shen still. That's, yeah, I got Unbot still, potentially, right? There's still uh, His cup runneth over with, with, with jungle picks. So that's a lot of respect Trifector giving, I think, rightfully so to this Robin. But if you're rival, that's a huge win, especially because they're first pick. They definitely are feeling very good about that one. It's a good throwaway ban, I think, for Trifecta anyway, because now Moswell can play the Alpwash, can play the Zeus if he really wants to. But seeing how Jormungandr and Merlin is open. I don't expect Rival to ban that when one away, wanting to leave both of those open so that they can first pick one. Try and force Trifecta to have to pick their poison, and then Rival can drink the antidote. It's Aphrodite, banned away by Rival. Remember, Trifecta were the ones banning this out in the first spot, so first pick is still banning it, but the teams have swapped. So Aphrodite won't be through. And is she really the only healer you're worried about at this level, Tolly? I mean, do you think Hell has a chance to slip through? I'm more worried about the Hell, personally. Than Aphrodite. Than oh, Aphrodite, sure. personally. But I think it's also the fact that both Trifecta and Rival have Aphrodite players. Trifecta's Moss, well, Rival's Final K can play right. it more often. But I'm still a little surprised to stay Afro. But with Weaken and Moswell paired up with the Aphrodite, I guess that does make sense. You don't want to give Weaken more aggressive options for the escape factor of the healing, the secondary life that the Aphrodite ultimate provides. And we've been seeing Horus bans too. I wonder if there's a chance Rival picks it. Remember, I think Rival were the first ones to pick Horus at Polar Bear Mike. And even though they won that game, you could not attribute it to Polar Bear Mike. He actually did not look all that great on it. I still personally do think Horus is a strong pick and one that you do want on your team. I just wonder in a world where Trifecta have been banning it in the second phase, if maybe first pick Rival can pull pull that in, or maybe Trifecta kind of forget about it, and, and maybe it comes up later. Really haven't seen set as well between yeah. these two teams. I don't think either one of them valuing it too highly, maybe still trying to figure it out Interesting. as it kind of goes along. But well, this should be Merlin. Really thinking about these warriors as Trifecta. They're definitely worried about it. Some of these aggressive physical gods and the Hercules Robin have been taken off the table. You know, I know you were saying, that, and Merlin, it comes as no surprise, that we haven't seen said. Do you expect him to be valued as much as Horus or maybe a little bit less at the SPL? Definitely not as much as Horus. Sure. I'm surprised that we only seen a couple of games with him out of Scream. Sure. And that's about it. I think Scream just picked him in some bad matches. I think it could definitely work. Yeah, I think so. Like, his burst potential is certainly blessing. there, um, but... Definitely not as much as Horus. Terra being locked up from Trifecta. I'm surprised that it's not a Jormungandr and a Kronos, but it's instead it's a Terra Kronos. You think that uh, you can go 
Freya Yorm here. Maybe that's too much magical damage. I think you could still get away with it, though, as the Anubis has hovered. I doubt that this will be locked in by Rival, as yes, Freya's on the table, so you definitely want her. Merlin Freya, a very potent combo already, perhaps even more so than the Freya Kronos from last game. And now they have their pick of the litter. They can go the Osiris here if they want. The Jormungandr certainly has some value, too, that they might feel a little bit too much magical reliant. Where do you want to see him going? You know what would be busted for Rival with those two picks? Faster. Cerberus. Oh, Cerberus would definitely open up the door for a lot more yeah, magic Yeah, Ghastly Breath. The yeah. penetration provides uh, Merlin with the fire stance being able to add more penetration on top of it. It's difficult to really get away from a Cerberus, especially if he gets Jump of Isolation. That's not kind of beneath PBM from doing. Man. You ban away Captain Twig's Robin, and then he picks in bots. And now you gotta deal with the Fear No Evil. It's just a tough life out here when you're trying to play up against Rival because they can play so many different things so well in so many different roles. It, it just feels like you don't have enough room to ban and pick stuff up against this team sometimes. Merlin, Freya, Unbots have been picked up for Rival somehow. And they ignore the Jormungandr, wanting the East Comfort picks, the jungle fight control with the Hunt Bats, the late game power from Arkill, playing the Freya in most of these games. And it's just comfort all across the board from Rival, not worried about much. And even Habwa from Trifecta is a little surprising. I don't think that needed to be picked right off the bat, knowing that Rival do ban away some mid laners in the secondary phase. I guess they wanted this before the bans came out. Maybe that's what it is. And, and, and this lets them potentially not reveal where everything's going. I mean, Habwa does have some potential to just be a Moswell pick or to maybe even be a weakened pick. Though I don't know if I place Habwa as a weakened type of god, even though Habwa can jungle. I don't know if he likes to sure. do that. So maybe they still have some flex potential here, but a little bit less. So if you're looking to gank Arkill on the Freya, mm. Hebo goes a long way. If you're going to get beats on level 1 Freya, if you get knocked up, you're still going to eat the crushing wave before you land on the ground. You can't get up into the Valkyrie's discretion to avoid the damage. There could be some kill potential there, but I'm still expecting this to go in the mid position, weaken. I kind of want to see him go... Ah, Rat's Hesker was banned. I was going to say Rat. Not a bad ban then. It's certainly not if it's when you were considering the Wheelish ban is strong too. I thought this would have been more likely last game, but Trifecta... Not going to have that option here in game number three. Rival take that one off the board. Jormungandr and Horus banned away by Trifecta. So one eye towards Polar Bear Mike, one eye towards Polar Bear Mike. Pele locks in, though. That gives them a good amount of early to mid-game pressure with this Pele. It's not as if she goes away late game either. She can definitely be aggressive during the laning phase. And more importantly, when there's going to be that 4-1 split of whichever team has Fire Giant and Sieging the Phoenixes, normally it's like jungle versus jungle, and then the rest of the... Uh, cast to be able to siege the other Phoenix and Pele versus Hunbats, Pele wins that matchup in the 1v1 right. handily. Exactly. In a world where, you know, both of them are kind of like treating ultimate or something like that. I mean, Pele wins that matchup just in getting on cooldown. The Fafnir hovered, but that's not what Polar Bear Mike wants. The Fenrir comes through. Now the Thor being looked at as well. That could be strong into the knockup, but this Osiris makes a little bit more sense to me. One of the highest prioritized gods now, so surprise he makes all the way down to nine, but certainly strong. I actually like the Thor into Final K because of Habwa. You yep. want to be able to like pin him against the wall. Pele can't get over it. Like none of these gods can get over that wall, but And avoid both those knockups, yeah. If you're looking for early pressure, the 2v2 win with a Fenrir, Osiris is probably your best bet. Osiris Fenrir is a ton of pressure in that 2v2, and right now it's looking like Terra, and we still don't know exactly what it is that Ducky that will be lining up on his side dead. of the map. So even just even just the 2v1 that we got on paper definitely favors Rival right now, but this feels like the most complete draft that Rival's gotten so far today, and they've already won both games. This is so scary at multiple points during the game. You got early game from Fenrir Osiris, big yep. game with the Hun Bats, a little bit of late game from him too, and sure. then... All across the board of every stage of the game is Merlin. Yes. And then super <laughs> late game Freya. Like, Rivals draft looking very clean. I think that Trifecta have to lean on the aggressiveness of Moswell and also Weakened. But the problem is, Moswell hasn't had the opportunity to play aggressive. He's always been getting the one dove. That's right. Can he find himself a little bit more room to breathe? Esther Cat comes in. So interestingly enough, Ducky's pick exists within here somewhere. Perhaps they're giving him the Terra yet again, and they're going with an aggressive assassin support like this Sir Cat then for Ionic. That's what it's feeling like. Ionic loves the Sir Cat. He's played it in game number one, getting a few couple of picks. Terra for Ducky yet again, putting him in this awkward matchup. Not having sure. great success with the Jormungandr uh, against the Osiris. 
could even be more difficult now with a Terra getting no healing after getting hit by the Lord of the Afterlife. Yeah. I think that this is a solo lane victory for Rival. I think so too. I mean, if it is Finn or Osiris over there, I don't know what your kit Terra is supposed to do in that matchup. It's just difficult. Not Maybe much. it'll be a chance for Ducky to give another try on stopping those minions as well if he does take this Terra. We'll certainly see. Game number three, it's Hindu and Taco on the call. Thanks so much, guys, on the desk. Yeah, me and Taco will be here for the third game, and maybe the last one with how Rival played that second game out here. I think Trifecta's composition this time around, though, Pele, Hebo, and Sir Cat, that little trio of the three, really have to try and pressure Panda Cat on this Merlin for me to try and make something happen. It's entertaining the killer be killed mentality, I think, between these two teams, but if I had to pick favorites, it's hard not to side with Rival in comparison to Trifecta's trio that they're going to try to battle with in the early game. That that Cirquet last pick option, I think, is what really threw me off because it, it felt kind of evident that it was going to be for Yannick on the support. Yeah. I wasn't entirely against it. I didn't hate Cirquet support in game one. No, his I think first that game's great, I think. Yeah. Yannick did a, a pretty solid job with a lot of those last spreads and the double taunts, especially with the Cobra's Kisses. But against the Umbats, I just struggle to see where Trifecta could possibly find control. What would you have liked instead of a Sir Cat this game, Taco? I know you said you don't like the Sir Cat, so what would you prefer? Uh, a solo laner that Ducky could play aggressive with instead of oh, taking no. the, the Guardian into the Warrior matchup that Finoke has been cyberbullying him on for two games in a row now That's and true. possibly a third. They could have put Terra, yeah, in the support role instead this game and switched it up. Moswell being pressured early on and oh no, at level one. You're gonna have a bad time against something like that. Three-man collapse, and if Osiris just hits you with one thing there, you are slow to high heaven. No chance even for Moswell to get his beads off in time. Turnaround might be fair play, though, as you can see Trifecta trying to invade the blue buff on the right-hand side, at least, in response here to find a window back. But the damage has already been done towards the mid lane. Moswell put behind a little bit earlier on, loses a bit of experience there at the start. But not only that, Panda Cat got the first blood. On the bright side, Ducky will get a blue buff this game due to a smart counter invade from Ionic and Ducky. They knew their speed buff was being manhandled by rivals, so they opted to go elsewhere. And because of that, Trifecta are still mostly even in solo, but Weekend gonna start, at the very man. least confirm Wowie's purple buff. Oh, Taco, it's such a rough start. Moswell under pressure again by Panda Cat in the jungle here. Weekend gets put behind because of the first blood too, because he loses his speed buff, so he has to rotate to the left hand side to try and get some farm there. And as soon as he gets there, well, Twig's waiting for him as well. Like, okay, we can take a trade. Panda Cat gonna strip away the jungle, and that's what Rival are looking to do here. Still I'm, so, early. I'm, I'm so surprised though with the way that Trifecta chose to handle that, but hold that thought because Panda Cat actually under fire here, but it's gonna be Captain Twig who takes out Moswell first. Weekend will return the favor against Rival and bring down Panda Cat, but the damage has already been done. Moswell is done. just struggling right now on this hop. Wow. Yeah, early on, really good work from Rival, but at least we can get himself a kill, and that's kind of important just for experiences sake more than anything else and at least it shut down panda cat a little bit there but it did allow panda cat to base quicker and get his tier two boots online but for a habwa to be so known for feast or famine yeah. and moswell definitely experiencing the famine portion of that right now could even take him a while to hit level five at, at the same period as everybody else in fact I, I don't think it'll be possible for him any longer especially not with trifecta trio splitting the mid waves See what happens next because at the moment Rival have dominated the jungle of Trifecta. Speed buff is spawning for Trifecta now, and no sign of Rival looking for it just yet. There's a full mid wave in the way, first of all, and the other kind of preventing that. Left hand side though, Arkill versus Worry. We saw that in game one of the Freya versus Kronos matchup. Surprised they have allowed Arkill to get Freya three games in a row. It just doesn't seem as though Trifecta feels like Freya is the problem and that their attention shift was been primarily towards Polar Bear Mike, honestly, but Mike, he just keeps flexing into whatever it is that Rival want him to do. It doesn't matter if it's a, a Guardian or a Warrior or just, just the Fenrir. I don't think you can ban a support player out these days. I think that's the issue with supports. It's so flexible in terms of Assassins, Warriors, and Guardians that can come into the mix. And the guys in the support will have to have a, a, a wide god pool to be able to do that. But there's always going to be another option, I feel like. It's not even that. For me, it's just Rival have made it obvious that they want to play aggressive in that solo lane mm. between Mike and, and Fine OK. So why not try and clash fire with fire, trying to stalemate the lane and, and hope that 
you know, you're going to have some relevancy when you rotate into the team fights. It's not been a strategy that's worked out too well for Ducky so far. Two coups for rival on the right hand side so far is the Osiris, as we were just mentioning. We'll have a potent matchup against the Terror. Slows, consistent slows from this Osiris are going to cause a lot of problems. We can meanwhile, he's going to play a lot of work this game, I think. His mobility, his dancing is going to be very much required to try and catch on this Merlin time and again. We at least saw one kill for Trifecta towards that Merlin. That's the only place I can ever really see kill potential so far. And even then, it's going to be tough because yeah. you've got Captain Twig with the Fear No Evil. <laughs> Just like that, Yannick. Almost becoming a victim of the very first one. Captain Tui just hit level five, and that's the type of disruption that I was just referencing. It's not easy to commit onto a Merlin when there's such a strong disengage tool for rival. Honestly, it's not too bad for Yannick to have that situation happen there, just because there was nothing on the map for him to take in terms of farm anyway. So a quick trip back to base won't be punished too heavily. Instead, you can get his full boots online. But at level three, Sirkay is struggling a little bit. It's not Doom and Gloom, though, because it's not Jungle Circa this game. It is Support Circa. Once he gets to level 5 online, he's going tanky anyway. The true damage is still going to make an impact. But the question is, when will he get the level 5 online? Even mm. though it's not necessarily the worst case scenario for Yannick to still be 4, it's not the best either, but Trifecta, looking like they want to pay Fine OK a visit, but they're going to have to worry about Polar Bear Mike first. Yannick with a nice Cobra's Kiss going to stop Mike from jumping in right away. Unchained going to be off the mark as well, and now Weekend might have a chance to go in. But Fine OK uses the ult, so does Mike. Mike turn around, trying to pick up Yannick, won't find a home there. Disengage has happened, Blue Buff still standing, and Captain Twig now on the way on the Hun Bats. He's got no fear no evil, however, so this is a non-ult situation for everybody. Fine OK still frontlining, has the passive available, though, to prevent some of this damage. Polar Bear Mike Meanwhile, gets bursted by Weaken, and Ionic has to get away. Trifecta, get a kill. But well, did they defend their blue? At least they did. Ducky has it. Captain Twig might have been a little bit too focused on that blue buff. It didn't have that Fear No Evil, though, to try and prevent his solo laner from going down. So that's fine, okay, just being punished for re-aggressing there. That's just disrespect from Rival, in my opinion. Like they, sh they shouldn't have been going for that blue. They still invested time into it. Not expecting Trifecta to put up a fight. And then the level fives come through because of that. Turnaround's fair play. Hey, but at least Trifecta are showing us signs of life. I think it's even worse if they don't find any punish That's there true. whatsoever. So if Rival are going to hand picks to Trifecta, they've got to take every single one, and they can't miss their opportunities because they're going to be far and few in between. The more often that Rival gets punished, probably the less likely that they choose to play that aggressive. Yeah, and it gets caught. Lazy back in an awkward position there, so he's going to have to fall back and take a little bit more time away. You can clearly tell Rival are investigating the speed buff. They've already got a ward down at the speed buff area, well aware of that situation as Panda Cat now has about a level and a half lead over Moswell in the mid lane. Mike draws some aggression out of Weaken and that forces Twig to go in looking for aggression with the Fear No Evil. Beads after the fact from Weaken were very early, but it still made an impact and Twig, who was hanging around for the Fear No Evil, doesn't find a win there. Trifecta turning this around nicely. The anti-heal onto Panda Cat can cause a problem. Can Moswell get in range with the Atlas of the Yellow River? Won't be an answer. Instead, it's Mike who gets focused. Luckily enough, though, for Moswell, Mike not interested in trying to utilize that Brutalize against the Habwa. Panicat going to live at the expense yeah. of his beads, but Captain Twig dying there one more time. Rival getting a little bit too frisky there with Trifecta and, and trying to force an aggressive situation. A little bit more like game one again. This is what it's starting to feel like, where Rival are trying to take huge bites instead of swallowing what they've got in the mouth first of all. Ionic trying to get the blue buff here. Fine, okay, rotates in, tether attached to reduce some damage. Ionic's got to be careful, has to fall back away from the tether. Ducky trying to secure his own blue against Nasiris, not an easy task, and he won't find it. He may even die because of it. Ionic has to help him out with a beautiful kiss, and in goes Captain Twig. But I tell you what, that kiss from Ionic just saved his life. Weakened, meanwhile, he was trying to wrap around the back and make a play, gets punished for it too. Ducky in. Well, it's like Ducky and Yannick have to fall back. And the blue buff invaded. That's the rival from game two there. <laughs> and it's it's honestly kind of incredible that Trifecta, or I shouldn't say Trifecta, but that rival could juggle two different engagements at the same time. 
And again, this all goes back to that initial flaw we brought up with Trifecta in that they just don't have a ton of early game presence. Yes, you've got Weekend on the Pele, and normally you'd expect to have some type of pressure coming out of your jungle, but you can't when both of your side lanes just don't really have a whole lot to offer. I mean, Takalo, with how the meta's been this year, you can go early game with no pressure, right? But you just got to make sure you... You, you got to make sure you hold your own. You, you don't die too much. You can lose a little bit of experience in the jungle, but you've at least got to not lose both the jungle and the lives. Oh, that's just the problem, though, isn't it? Ducky so. just keeps getting put into these situations, and... I, I had to assume that it's something that Trifecta just feel really comfortable with throwing their solo laner into that first pick position, but it's tough stuff, especially when Rival get Merlin and are able to just shred the Gulf Fury. Oh, yeah. uh, Trifecta had vision, there's just nothing they could do about it. Definitely one of the things that Rival bring with this Merlin this game is, like you said, that Merlin. Rowie well, has to rewind away from Arkill after the banish, use his beads as well. Perfectly safe in lane for the time being. The next gank could be cause a problem, especially if Captain Twig pays some attention. Ionic rotating in, though, to punish Arkill, and Arkill going to use his beads in his ultimate, too. So both the Hunters, all the solo lane, duo lane, as is the best way to call it now, as they're not even Hunters, have both used their relics and ults. It does feel a little bit more like solo lane these days, it does. but Arkill, without that Valkyrie's discretion, is not going to take any chances, won't be pushing up anytime soon until he feels as though the wave is far enough towards him that he can comfortably step outside that tower line to clear it. But it all keeps drawing back to the same circumstance for me where Rival are just setting the entire pacing of this set. And while we've seen instances of Trifecta fighting back with that, just look at the scoreboard. Rival have a 4,000 gold lead over Trifecta already, and it just hit 10 minutes. And this isn't Trifecta. It's not about the picks. It's not about kills. It's just Rival getting the advantages in the lanes. And is that, that's picks and bands, then, where the pressure's going from Trifecta, because they focused on other areas to try and hold picks a little bit longer. They've been given weak, quite a bit of room to try and get his selection for the most part, but that's actually causing Rival to be able to ban him away a little bit more in some of the comps. I, I really like the wheel expand that Rival did during this last game to try and make sure there wasn't a window for the knockups to become a problem for Mahivo. Could be a problem for Woe here as he's dragged back under his own tier one tower. He'll at least get credited for the kill as we can at least turns it around and our kill overextended here. This was greedy from Rival. Punish again on this left hand side and weakening with a huge double kill is very important for uh, but is it really a punish sure Arkill and polar bear might both die but they got the t1 tower they got wowie on without his beads and a pick plus a tower certainly makes up for two members dying because we can want that double kill gets a little bit of gold but he's got four kills so far on trifecta and it doesn't even feel like it panda cat Gonna blink away towards mid, but straight into Moswell uses the beads early on. The beads won't buy him enough time. Ionic looking for a kill. Won't find it. The fear no evil actually was good from Twig, but he changed targets. Ionic slipped the noose for a second, and he'll jump away to the safety of mid. Ionic and Moswell combine nicely there, but Moswell at the tail end gets up, picked up by Polar Bear Mike. So he's still just a one for one. A little sloppy there from Twig. It was. Honestly, it's, it's, it's not, not the first the time that we've seen him with the Sumbat, uh, there's been a couple of sacred monkey tosses early on as well that he's been off the mark with. He's not clean today. That's what I was going to say. Like the whole side, don't think Twig's been as clean as we've seen before, but it's not really hurt rival in the grand scheme of things. As long as you find the win, it doesn't matter. Well, and I think that's something that also says a lot about team rival as a whole, right? Because that's true. Because even if your jungler is having a slight off day, because I do consider this a slight off day for Twig. I think even Twig will uh, agree to that as well so far with his performance. But yeah. It doesn't matter because Rival are doing so well everywhere else that they're compensating for their jungler being a little bit off the market. And that kind of teamwork is, it can go a long way. It's a world championship team almost. That's what you look at because the old energy boys who won two world championships. Adapton had bad games. Demi had bad games. You know, every, every gonna member happen. of that team. Yamin did not have bad games. I'm not going to ever say that. But, like, you know, everyone had different bad games on that team, but they all went rallying around and still performed arguably very, very well. Tim will tell the mid lane goes down for Rival as Twig wraps around the back, hits the overhand smash on the Yannick and gets kissed for the trouble. Then Moswell and Woey collapse and Twig is down again. Well, we called it, and at least, you know, there was a further follow-up to prove a bit of a point there. Mike under a bit of pressure, but I love the fact that he saved the leap until the clap came through to avoid the damage. Trifecta grouping up as five now, looking towards a Pyromancer. 
This could be a good fight opportunity here for Trifecta. They're going to look to rush down Fino K first and foremost. Lord of the Afterlife going to be expended straight on top of Wowie. This but Fino K didn't have the rest of his team there, and Trifecta are just picking Rival apart now. This is the first time Trifecta have grouped up as five, and look how quickly they've done it. They realized they were a deficit. The 5k down, funny enough, in terms of gold here, but trying to make something happen by five-man grouping, and sometimes this is just the correct call. Oh, my God. Straight to a fire? They're I going, like this. They're going for it. Uh, the whole nine yards. Polar Bear Mike's going to be the first one to sniff this one out for Rival. Arkeel now okay. going to come charging in with the Freya. And two members is all it really hey. takes because Trifecta knew the rest were coming. Full respect, but Ionic in the mid meanwhile goes aggressive in mid lane. Mike has managed to find a bit of a pick on Ducky. Oh, kill gets credit for the kill there. The collapse in an awkward spot. Might as at least turns it around onto Mike, but that's a support down for a crushing wave. After the fight, Captain Twig falls down. And Panda Cat's damage is good, but not good enough for a kill. All right. I, I know that Twig's been a little bit off today, but that was just pure on luck. Uh, he had no luck in that situation. <laughs> Drops the Fear No Evil at the same exact moment Moswell's investing into the crushing wave. I've got no faults with Twig on that one. He just gets caught out with no possible way of escape there. And, and Trifecta make the best out of a what could have been, I think, a troublesome situation. Definitely. Red Buff being looked at on this left-hand side real quick. Final case secures that. And the worst thing is Rival are just respawning for the most part at the best possible time because the Primal Fury is available here. This will just help with jungle control more than anything else, clearing the buffs out even quicker. Not just that, the Fire Giant too. Right as you think that Trifecta might have a solid foot holding to finally bring themselves back into this one, Team Rival just continue to step it up a notch. That Primal Fury going into Rival's hands now means that Trifecta on Fire Giant attempts Probably not going to be as likely. I will say, I love the call from Trifectus to group as quick as they did. They find a pick of two and went, hey, group real quick. They pressure, they find a kill on fine, okay, and then convert it into a pyro and potentially a fire giant. I think that was a really good call from them. Just sticking around afterwards really hurt them. They should probably just keep sporadically grouping. Yeah, I because agree. Because Trifecta already know they lost the laning phases, but if they can continuously pick rival from just having five members together, that's a good pool of Captain Twig's beads already off of the Blink Cobra's Kiss from Iana. Polar Bear Mike now could actually be in some trouble. Ducky looking for the wraparound root from the Monolith, but not going to be able to find it. Stop time is good, though, and it forces no. out the Ragnarok. It's not about fighting for rival now, though, Tackle. They have sensed what Trifecta are wanting to do. Sure, go for a Tier 1 Tower and Fighters, because it just means all kills free farm on this left-hand side. He's going to get a lead over Kronos. Reinitiation from rival, though, with the Blink Fear, no evil out from Captain Twig. Final K did a pretty good whip the Lord of the Afterlife, but he's taken on the whole team, and somehow he's still alive! Panda Cat kills Weaken at the same time this is going down. Ionic and Moswell are on low health, and Mike and Panda Cat, they can smell blood. Uh, Panda Cat's not done just yet. Arcane Stand's gonna do him a favor and bring Moswell back into oh, melee Moswell. range, but this could actually work out better for Moswell. He turns it around, Water Spout into the Water Cannon. Another one onto Mike, but wow, he's gonna already get credit for the kill. Arkill trying okay. to clean up the pieces, though, with the Valkyrie's discretion. We'll find Ionic, but a nice walk clap there from Ducky into the Monolith. Gonna stop. Well, oh, just kidding. Oh, oh, be careful. Our kill's in trouble now as well. On left-hand side, Final K's going to get a tier two towers. This is going on. But that was Rival once again being a little bit aggressive. And I'm going to put this the right way because Panda Cat and Polar Bear Mike, they smelled blood and they were correct to do so. They had a couple of kills available for them. But they got too fancy. Mike completely ignored Moswell and went, yo, Panda, you deal with that. I'll deal with the other two. And it meant they both ended up dying and not even finding the kill in the first place. Rival might have even lucked out a little bit there that Fine OK didn't wind up dying. I think we can assume that he was going to have enough yeah. burst damage on that Pele, but that Osiris barely clinging on to dear life. Passive, baby. I, I think good. Trifecta, Ducky shouldn't have teleported to stop Arkill's split push. If they'd had the Terra's blessing in that fight, I think Trifecta might have just wiped Rival. Well, Moswell has caught up in like, levels now in that mid lane. Actually, a two-level lead over Panda Cat, which is pretty pretty substantial considering the fact that he died for first blood and then second blood soon after. But now he's hung around a bit too far in the mid lane and he's going to get followed through with that Berserker's Barrage. And Panda Cat will get credit for the kill. Ionic who blinked in looking for Panda Cat and got beads in response. Gets dragged under a tier one tower, but he's tanky enough to survive for now. Captain Twig, meanwhile, has found Ducky in the jungle. Ducky will just have to escape for now. All the while, it's still a 6,000 gold lead for Rival. Smart Ragnarok from Mike onto Ionic, but just not enough lockdown once Ionic was actually underneath the tower. Deathbane, still a pretty good escape tool for a Sir Ket. 
And looking back, I think that that was just Trifecta maybe feeling themselves a little bit too much there for Mazwell to ult forward with the crushing wave. Probably assumed that he'd be able to deal a little bit more damage, but really needs that Obsidian Shard first. Since he went for the Breastplate of Valor in that third item slot, yes, it was smart to get a little bit of physical defenses because of the Fender and Osiris, but you definitely give up a lot of damage. This was a play on Trionic, and it worked out beautifully there. They wide him to wrap into the mid lane and look for a pick, and he did exactly that. Pandaka stayed at max distance, avoids the kiss, and they just dispose of the support very quickly. Red buff is about to spawn now for Trifecta on this left-hand side, but Rival in a position. They've actually found Weaken in the jungle here. Weaken forced to take a trade, uses all defensively, but he can't escape Polar Bear Mike, who is having a fantastic set so far. They'll also dispose of a tier 2 tower on the left-hand side while they're over there, and then potentially even fall back for the red buff, but they've got to be careful of Moswell in the jungle. Absolutely smothered. And there's just nowhere left for Weaken to run. The Brutalize following Pele through her ultimate was what really signed off on Weekend's fate for that tower dive. Plus, the T2 tower just was not healthy enough to be reliable as a safety net there. Trifecta probably already aware of that as well, but more importantly, Rival know that Gold Fury is spawning, but would much rather try to pressure an early fire giant against Trifecta. Weekend still got about 10 more seconds left until he's back up and running, and this Pyromancer is looking prime for the taking. I will say, though, even though Twig's been off the mark a little bit with some of his ability use and kills, his farming is insane. He's two levels up on Weekend at this point with how this is going. And Final K2, he's a man mounted at level 17 over the entire team. Well, it, it kind of helps when your team's getting every single objective. That is true. You have to factor in, despite Trifecta leading in kills, they're not leading in gold or experience by any means. And Ionic, one more time, gonna get picked up and shut down. Now Ducky under pressure too. Fair no even from Captain Twig. Once again, didn't really connect properly. Overhand smash comes into play, but not enough to bring down Ducky yet. However, with Yannick still being dead, the window's open for Rival to turn their attention towards the FG. Weaken is around, and he has his ultimate available as well as Blink. This could be problematic though. Panicat relatively low on mana, but that won't make a difference. Moswell trying to use that crushing wave to escape, get a little bit of DPS out there as well. Weaken though, looking to take down Captain Twig on the back line. We'll be successful oh, in doing so. Can make a huge play here. The ultimate is channeling the electric damage is coming through. Double kill for Weaken, but he's still gonna deal with our kill as well, who's a big problem on this Freya now. And the chase potential's on with the haste ring available. We can get a wrap around the right hand side, look for a bit of sustain if possible. He knows he's in an awkward spot. All he's trying to do is buy as much time as possible. No blink available, looking for cooldowns, using the mobility, looking for sustain, tries to take a trade. Won't end up working out. Unfortunate situation as Rival tie up the kill deficit. Mm. Almost wish that Ionic would have blinked over the wall there. No. Really? I think he could have blinked over the wall and killed Mike. Mike had all of his abilities on cooldown because he was chasing Weaken around. I, I I want to say no just because of the level differential between Ionic and everybody. On the I don't team. know. Last breath was up, Hindu. Mike had 15% health and like no mana to See, boot. See, you all just have to kill you. You're all about your kills. A hey, support a pick's a pick. Ah. And it might be worth it for Trifecta when you're already this far behind. 9,000 gold. That number I keep saying keeps growing as Rival continue to keep the pace up in this game. It's not been clean this game three. Game two was definitely the cleanest so far in the set. But it's been fast. But it has been still all in Trifecta's favor. I wouldn't. You can't say it's 10k gold lead in 20 minutes. Even though it's been scrappy. Well, I know you meant Rival's favor yes. for, for starters. Yes. Um, but <laughs> what I was going to say is that it's just been, I don't want to call it rushed, but Rival don't seem as though they're taking any slow down periods. Right. They like are just spamming into Trifecta. And I think it's partially because of the fact that they're trying to take advantage of this roster being a little bit newer since Moswell is a more recent addition That's for the fair. team. They haven't necessarily had a whole lot of practice time yet with their mid laner. And if Rival can just rush Trifecta down, it can keep the team discombobulated. Yeah, kind of like clutter in the comms with more over aggression. Fire Giant here being done. Ducky gets into the pit to see what's going on. Gets a good little root off after the fight, but will fall down. After the fight, Yana gets hit by the Ragnarok and at least ults on the Panda Cat, who's taking a ton of damage. He'll die to that life. Oh, will he? I'm not even sure he will. Yes, he will towards the tail end. Triple kill, however, going the other way as this one continues. Arkel on a Quadra and Ionic, the only one left standing. There's no Penta on the board, but Twig is not having the greatest of games, I'll tell you that. He still gets the kill at the tail end. That's a deer side for Rival, and that could just be game three. 
<laughs> if he'd missed the overhand smash, though, that would have been kind of hilarious. But Twig's going to get his just desserts, just like Rival are about to finish cleaning up Trifecta. And Ducky will be up, I, I think, right at the tail end of this Titan Siege, but I'm not sure that a lone Terra is going to have the DPS necessary to stop Rival in their tracks. Now at this point, this is going to go the way of Rival. Ducky's going to do everything he can. Ducky versus the world, and the world will definitely stand up here. Arkill gets himself a very, very delayed penalty kill, technically, because he killed Ducky earlier on in that one. 3-0 to Rival. Like you said, though, I kind of agree with what you were saying, you know? It, it wasn't clean from Rival, but sure, maybe Discombobulate and Trifecta don't let them settle down too much. Really did make an impact there, and Trifecta still slipped to a 3 and out. It, it's just when you're constantly being spammed by pressure, when you just want to try and slow down the pacing of the match. I think Trifecta was trying to prevent Rival from constantly running into them. It's just that anytime Trifecta weren't grouped, uh, Rival usually would be, and then they would instantly look for the pigs. It was just so much chaos across the board that Trifecta couldn't really keep up. Well then, we'll see what Trifecta can do moving on forward. They've still got a couple of games left in the split so far. I think we've got a match against Splice to play, and of course, the real test, the LG matchup. That's the one I'm looking forward to. Battle of the Bottom is always fun. Just a shame no one gets relegated. That'd be even more interesting there overall. What do we like out of Trifecta today? Um, I, I think that it definitely felt like the team had more direction um, with a lot of their engagements. I, I also feel like there's definitely a lot of potential now with Moswell on this roster, but I'm not completely sold just yet as long as they keep throwing Ducky into those awkward situations. Well, work in progress still for Trifecta. No real surprise there. It's all about the second phase for them. But Rival, meanwhile, find that 3-0 they were looking for. Let's go to the desk to break down set one. So Rival still then hold on to that chance to grab that top spot after getting a 3-0 win over Trifecta. Perhaps the result not very surprising. I think Rival were the favorites, but maybe the way in which they did it. And games one and three to me totally were the same thing. Yeah, Trifecta got more kills in the early game, but Rival were the ones doing all the farming. Yeah, they invaded right off the bat. Moswell yes. on the <laughs> Habwa getting caught way out of position. Didn't really expect the loop around. But when you're dealing with a Fenrir and an Osiris, you have to expect that kind of a pressure. You're going to lose the 2v2 almost no matter what you draft. Fenrir was a great pick for a couple of reasons. It deals with the Crushing Wave. You could chase that down with the right. Brutalize. And then also knowing Ionic is going to be playing the Circuit, he's not going to have beads. He's an easy target for the Ragnarok. And they were able to bring him back time after time. For what it's worth, I actually thought Moswell played the Habwa relatively well, finding good moments to use the Crushing Wave, which to reposition, but it just was not enough. Polar Bear Mike was a monster on this Fenrir through the early game. Panda Cat had the Merlin and showed why that one is very often considered the uh, a perma ban. And then my man Arkel said, this game's done. Let's find myself a Quadra kill. Couldn't get the Penta though, because uh, who was it? Ducky ran away from him and separated too far off and meant there was no way for him to complete it. But just big play from Arkel on the Freya. Making up for his late rotation around that uh, 16 minute <laughs> mark when he was split pushing the tier two. He's like, okay, I guess I'll rotate now. Too little too late that time around, but really cleaning up the game. Uh, at the 23 minute mark. I was said I was going to be surprised if this game lasted more than 22 minutes and lasted almost 24. And almost. So you're a little bit off on that one, Tully, but I think we can still give you some credit. Captain Twig also proving, I think, that even without the Robin available to him, he can certainly still pilot the Unbots at, at, at an extremely high level. And again, time after time, this is what it boils down to me when I, dis when I dissect what makes this team rival team so strong. It's that they're the most flexible 5v5 team I can think of. They can all play so many different things, so many different play styles specifically, and it makes it so hard to ban against them. It very well is. I mean, when you're giving up Merlin because you have to respect ban the Robin Hercules, that it's becomes really obnoxious to deal with. The Freya was a huge benefit, I think, for Arkill, playing it in all three games. Even when it was Freya and Kronos still giving it to Arkill, he felt very comfortable so I think looking at this set, other teams are going to have to start looking at that duel lane because you can't always necessarily ban away the Freya. I'm not saying to do that, but definitely sure. look for ways to mitigate that late game by ganking the early game. Well, they picked the Kronos over the Freya in that situation. I'm sure Arkel can play the Kronos just as well, mm -hmm. but maybe at least force him to switch it up and prove he can do something different on something else, right? Because at this point, I, you'd seen all the Freya evidence you needed yep. to, right? Between game one and two. So at least make them do something different, I think is sort of what you're getting at there. But I mean, it, it, it's all the way down the list on this team. Fine, okay, in every one of these matchups, able to get the better 
of Ducky today, mm -hmm. too. I mean, for the most part, though, Ducky didn't take winning matchups, but Final K absolutely capitalized. I think that's something Trifecta have to really look at in sure. the later phase, too, is like Ducky's matchups are not favorable. He's always playing Guardians. He needs to play the aggressive Warriors to get that advantage and also maybe uh, go for an aggressive Warrior for Ionic, right? Like, he's sure. going for this double Guardian that one game where it was Terra and Capri or sorry, Jormungandr and Kepri, it's just not enough to win that 2v2. No, especially not up against the uh, the pressure and aggression that's been shown from rival in the 2v2 between Captain Twig, or excuse me, between Final K and Polar Bear Mike. Those yeah. two were very aggressive in the dueling, so I agree. Maybe some adjustments necessary. We won't get to hear from Trifecta, though we will get to see some of what's on the mind for Team Rival, the winners here of this set in a 3-0 fashion. Panda Cat and Captain Twig are standing by. Jumbo here by Team Rival now after their 3-0 victory today. Congratulations, boys, first of all. Uh, how do you both feel about your performance today? Uh, I mean, in like sets where we're against uh, the lower seeded teams, uh, we don't really play through mid because there's no point. We have power players and other roles, so I just kind of run around and farm, and then Mike just like uh, goes to the lane that he wants to help punish, and I just kind of run around and let my team win. So, I mean, it was a good set. I didn't really do anything like crazy. Uh, not great, honestly. I run around like a headless chicken for the most part, uh, but we won. I think the skill gap just came out from our lanes, to be honest. So. Well, I, I think it's fair to assume that you guys were probably expecting to take this set win over uh, Trifecta here today. But uh, looking forward now, uh, MSI right around the corner. What are some of the team's thoughts uh, surrounding that? You want to? Uh, well, we're excited. Uh, we're going to go for the win. Uh, we've got stuff prepared already for it, and uh, we're like that's kind of what we're holding our stuff for. Um, you know, we're going to we're going to still stick to our identity, I think, as a team. And uh, uh, basically, we're just preparing for all the all the different uh, like teams we might come up against. So we're pretty excited. I will say the focus towards picks and bans from you guys, you seem to know where your power plays seem to be and playing through consistently. Is that just like what you feel like is your team is stronger in terms of where your lane strengths are? Or is it more to do with the matter of like which gods should be banned and picked? Um, I think when the teams are closer in skill, it'll be more meta based. But I think when you have like obvious mismatches, not to like offend any players, but when you have obvious mismatches, you're just going to pick pressure in their lanes and let them run it down, and then their pressure is going to translate into a win. But uh, when it comes to closer games, it is more meta-dependent and god-dependent. More not, not like, oh, Arkle is just way better, so we're just going to play through Arkle and let him have pressure. It's more like we need to draft what gods we need to do what we want to do. So it's a little bit more tedious as we get uh, versus the higher teams, but versus the lower teams, like, pick pressure, run it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a real question then. The skill gap that you talked about there, do you actually think it's player dependent or is it more to do with the gods and the meta that you guys are playing? Or is it just a bigger gap in skill between the players? Uh, I do think we're slightly ahead of the meta for sure. But like, uh, I do think the player still a skill with people like uh, Fine, uh, OK, and uh, Kenny, and even like Pandacat, um, like it's just like, they're like top one or two in their roles, in my opinion. So I just think like it's it's free. Even if even if we get slightly outdrafted, then the the games are still pretty good for us. Awesome. Last your question then. What's your hopes and uh, what's your expectations for MSI? What's your main focal point there? I mean, our hopes are obviously to win, and I think we if we play how we're supposed to play and play where we're gonna play, we should win. Like, I'm not really scared of any teams. But I mean, a, a lot of teams look really good right now. Dig looks really good. Well, they're looking worse, but they did look really good. Renegades is super strong. So I feel like if we stick to our guns and just draft what we need to draft and pick what we're planning to pick, we should just win. Well, congratulations on the 3-0 today. Good luck in the rest of your series. Thank, Thank you. you.